Well, we finally made it here, the final regular season game for the Southwestern Pirates and Senior Day here live from Birkelbach Stadium. I'm Carl Schoening along with my color analyst Chuck Crazy. Behind me is our producer Michael Francis on the field, Julian running the sideline camera and the broadcast camera angle is Mickey Holden. There's a Senior Day ceremony about to take place. We'll go ahead and hand it over to Curtis Parker. Starting at defensive tackle, number 77, Nick Hackett. Starting at the other defensive end, number 94, Jason Lund. Starting at linebacker, number 38, Major George. Starting at linebacker, number 36, Bernard Century. Starting at linebacker, number 5, Ben Brotman. Starting at safety, number 11, Peyton Ludeman. Starting at safety, number 2, Easton Feller. Starting at defensive back, number 21, Jules Williams. Starting at quarterback, number 23, Jackson Reese. Now we'll meet the Pirates' offensive starters. Starting at split end, number three, Austin Castilleja. Starting at Quaker, number 84, Ethan Powell. Starting at left tackle, number 78, Arturo Jimenez. Starting at left guard, number 76, James Hill. Starting at the center, number 67, Josh Pinker. Starting at right guard, number 61, Jacob Wheelhouse. Starting at right tackle, number 65, Charles Del Rosa. Starting at tight end, number 85, Joey Robinson. Starting at fullback, number 39, Dawson Gonzalez. Starting at running back, number 23, Brady French. And the starting quarterback is number 12, Landry Gilpin. At this time, please turn your attention to the field as we honor our 2021 Southwestern football seniors and their families. <laughs> Number eight, Mason Biggers, is earning his BA in business and plans on pursuing his master's in sports product management at the University of Oregon. He is escorted by his parents Sean, Big, Sean and Christy Biggers. Number five, Ben Brockman, is a senior business major with a minor in history. He intends to pursue a career in coaching and teaching. He is escorted by Lee Brockman, Michelle Brockman, Carmen O'Neill, and Steve O'Neill. Number 52, Brian Estrada, is earning his BS in kinesiology with a minor in psychology. After graduation, he will attend graduate school at Texas State for rehabilitation sciences and physical therapy. He is escorted by Maria LeBlanc, Kendrick LeBlanc, Maddie Brent, and Melanie Brent. Number 23, Brady French, is a business major who intends to pursue a career in marketing and sales. He is escorted by Mike and Cindy French and Robert French. Number 38, Major George is a kinesiology major with a minor in exercise and sports studies who will be seeking a career as a strength and conditioning coach. He is escorted by Chris George, Stacy George, Don Ray George, Linda George, and Janice Bennett. Number 51, Elliot Hammond is a political science and history major who plans on attending law school at Arizona State University, Alabama, or Washington and Lee. He is escorted by Paul Hammond, Helen Hammond, Davin Major, and Lawson Pot. Number 76, James Hill, is a business major with a minor in economics. After Southwestern, he will attend graduate school for accounting. He is escorted by Jacob Hill, Maddie Rackley, Taylor Clark, and Janice Bennett. <laughs> Number 45, Grant Mitchell, is a kinesiology major and psychology minor. He will attend graduate school to pursue a career in sports psychology. He is escorted by Ashley Jennings, Will Mitchell, and Leslie Mitchell. Number 
number 61, Jacob Liebelhaus, is earning his BA in kinesiology and business with a minor in exercise and sports studies. After graduation, he intends to pursue a career in coaching. He is escorted by John Liebelhaus, Sarah Liebelhaus, Ben Liebelhaus, and Sam Liebelhaus. Let's give one more round of applause to all of our Southwestern Pirate teammates. A really good group of seniors this year. First of all, they've all been Southwestern men. Loving, mature, committed, sacrificing, passionate, relentless, courageous, and honorable. Something they can be proud of, something that their parents can be proud of. On the field, they've played for the first two teams to be in the national polls. They'll be able to look back with a sense of pride and achievement. Maybe most importantly, they've led us through this pandemic experience. And as, as everyone knows that follows our team, it's been, been quite an eventful year. They've always been diligent, they've always been hardworking, and they've always had a growth mindset, and it's really helped our football team get through one of the roughest periods of, uh, of college football in history. So thank you to our seniors. Thank you to their parents and families that have supported them. We're going to miss each of you. I'm really appreciative and can't say thank you enough to my parents. They've been there from the beginning, going to all the different sports games that I've played in. They do their best they can to get to every single game I play, and I'm really appreciative and forever will be grateful. For this season, I'm specifically thankful for everyone involved in the athletics program, not just for football, but everyone that's done everything they can to get all the athletes being able to play their seasons. For us specifically, I want to thank the coaches, the equipment staff, the student trainers, the film crew, everyone that's been a part of being able to play week in and week out. I really thank you. I just want to thank uh, my parents, my family so much. They've gone through so much um, just to support me and to give me my opportunity to live out my dream playing college football. I can't be more grateful to them and just to this university, to our coaches and to everyone that's supported us on this team. Um, I'm so blessed for the opportunities I've had here at Southwestern. Thank you so much to everyone that supported us along the way. Love y'all. I'd just like to give thanks to my family my friends, everyone who gave the opportunity to play this beautiful game, and I uh, want to take my dad who passed away recently, and I just want to give thanks for these last few weeks, and I appreciate every, every opportunity I've been given. Thank you to all the coaches, and everyone here in Southwestern who tries to make the name across our chest great, and I thank everybody. I just want to thank my parents for all they've done for me over the years, uh, my grandparents uh, for all of y'all's support, going to every single game, and I really appreciate everything y'all have done for me. Um, I just want to say thank you to my parents, my sister, and my grandparents for being at almost every game that I've ever uh, I've ever had uh, here at, here at college. I also want to say thanks to my coaches for giving me this chance and this opportunity to play college football. I never thought I'd get to this point. Big shout out to my my close friends. I mean, they y'all know who y'all are, and uh, I love you guys. Thanks for sticking with me over this past year, past few years. Um, whenever I needed it most. Thank you just to everyone else who's helped me along the way. I really appreciate it. Go Bucks. First of all, I'd like to thank the people who are here for me today, my dad, my sister, and my friends, Davin Master and Lawson Piles. I would also like to thank all of my friends here at South Southwestern University. And I would like to thank my teammates, not only here at Southwestern, but throughout my time uh, as a football player. I'd also like to thank all of my coaches that I've ever had. Um, uh, I'd like to thank some people that aren't here today, like my mom, my grandparents, my aunts and uncles, and my cousins, uh, and other friends I've made throughout my life. Uh, you are all supportive and helpful in getting me through to this point, which has taken 15 years, and uh, I finally made it. 
Uh, I just want to thank my, my parents, my mom, my dad, and my grandparents for helping me get through college and everything else. And then my brothers for getting me into sports and everything else. And then just friends, family, everyone who's helped me throughout this journey through college. I just want to take this time to say thank you to everybody who's helped me on my journey here. Um, not just friends and family, but all the coaches that have been with me the entire time I've been here, you know, really pushing me and, you know, helping me get to that next level. And uh, yeah, I just want to say thank you a lot. Just want to say thank you to uh, my mom and dad. Uh, without your support, there's no way I could be the man I am or be playing football at this wonderful school, which I have done the last four years. Uh, and big thanks to my little brothers too. Uh, ben and Sam, uh, without their support and without them looking up to me, uh, I don't know if I could have made it playing football these four years. But thanks to all four of you. I love you all. And thanks for being here today. Well, a nicely done rendition of the National Anthem played over a recording here at Birkelbach Stadium. And we are so happy that you guys joined us for a little afternoon spring football. About four minutes until kickoff here. I'm Carl Schoening along with Chuck Crazy. And Chuck, you know, we, uh, we were on that road trip last week. It was a heartbreaker of a game where at first, Southwestern came back from down 13-0 to take a 31-13 lead. They scored 31 unanswered. Then Louisiana College comes back and scores 21 unanswered to win 34 to 31. And, you know, bouncing back, I'm sure we talked about it on SU Football Weekly with Coach Joe Austin. They are a competitive team. They were right back in the locker room, the weight room, preparing for this Bellhaven game. Well, and, and the Pirates have been close to victory a couple of times this season and yet have uh, un unattained that victory that they need and that they want badly that they've been working for. And last week's game was just a roller coaster of a game, as you mentioned, down 13 early, then 31 straight Pirate points followed by 21 points by Louisiana College to close out that game. And the Pirates come home with a loss, and I'm sure it was a long road home for this pirate football team and they were able to get their attitude and as you mentioned coach said they got in the weight room and started working and competing right away and we'll see that today as they take on the Bellhaven University football team and right now we have captains at the middle of the field for the pirates it's number five of course that's Ben Brockman the big senior linebacker and for the Bellhaven team it's jt dorsett the defensive lineman or check that it's number 98 demetrius brokenberry he's a senior 6'2 271 pounder out of shreveport louisiana speaking of louisiana right yeah he makes his way up to jackson mississippi and you know it seems to me maybe a theme but i did not quite catch how that turned out it seemed like they knew what it was down in the field obviously when they were communicating but i didn't quite see the officials uh, say who was receiving and deferring so we'll be finding out with you i take it yeah i, I did not catch that either there was no signal and, and traditionally at least in the high school level i assume it's the same here at division three that coin toss has done well before the midfield meeting of the captains so it will be southwestern kicking it off to start the football game Back deep to receive the kick will be Colby Blunt as well as Michael Simpson, both wide receivers on the team. Will we'll Herps will line it up at the 35. We'll see if Herps, with, with minimal win, tries to get one out of the back of the end zone or if he's going to try to strategically place this. It's a beautiful day in Georgetown, Texas. Not a cloud in the sky. We have some spring football ready to kick off here on SHN Sports. Herps readies the Pirates and 
will take a nine-yard charge, puts toe to leather. It's an end-over-end kick that will be taken by Blunt at around the three-yard line. He'll take it across the middle of the field to the left hash mark, down to the left numbers, crosses the 25-yard line and gets out of bounds just past the 30 and a solid return, taking a wide angle to get it to the 32-yard lines where the Bellhaven Blazers will start their first drive. And Ben Brockman, the senior there on special teams coverage, forcing uh, the returner out of bounds, uh, Blunt. So it'll be Mario Asagunla who will go under center here. We heard that that might be a common theme. Asagunla throws to the left on the first play of scrimmage, and it is a completed pass to Jordan Cox, and the tight end picks up yards to the 40-yard line, about eight yards on first down. That's Peyton Ludeman, the safety there, coming up to make the stop, preventing the receiver from picking up enough yardage for the first down, but it is second and short for the Blazers. Asagunla under center. Two receivers to the right, a single receiver to the left. Stretches it to the left side on the give. The first down is picked up by Brad Foley, and he gets close to midfield after getting that yard to gain across the 45-yard line. That's just a simple dive play to the first back through the line of scrimmage. Nice blocking on the left side of the line for Bellhaven, and a nice gain for a first down for the fullback, Foley. First and 10, Blazers still in their own territory at the 47-yard line. We'll now see Asagunla in the shotgun. Two men in the backfield with him. First time that he's going into the shotgun this evening, or this afternoon, I should say. And he gives it to Foley, who tries to go around left end. And he's swallowed up as he crosses midfield into Pirates territory at the 48-yard line. Credit the tackle there to big Noah Clarkson, number 90 for the Pirates, playing defensive tackle out of Magnolia. Still a decent gain, though, on first down. It's going to be second and five. That power run game is going to be something that the Pirates have not seen all season long, and they definitely probably prepared for all week long. Yeah, it's probably been a tough week of practice. There's a lot of hitting when you come up against a team like Bellhaven. Second and five, ball on the Pirates' 48-yard line. It'll be a run for Asagunla to the right side, and he is stood up at the line of scrimmage, not going anywhere. Yeah, Brockman there along with number 36, uh, Bernard Century on the stop. And uh, Asa Gunla didn't look very enthused about having to carry that football. Maybe it was even a broken play, but uh, it, it certainly wasn't uh, the effort you typically see from a quarterback taking off on a designed run. It's third and about five now. And this is a big third down. Pirates trying to get their defense off the field. Also going on the shotgun, he'll drop back for a pass, scans to his right, throws across the middle, it's completed at the 30 into the 20, and he's going to take it across the 10 into the end zone, touchdown, a 48-yard touchdown, grabbing that one was Michael Simpson, and Asa Gunla with his first pass completion inside the pirate side of the field, picks up 48 yards for a touchdown on the Blazers strike first. That was a great pass by Asa Gunla. Uh, good coverage by the Pirates, but the defender fell down as he tried to reach out and knock the ball down. It results in a touchdown for Bellhaven, but it's still very early. As we witnessed last week, the Pirates fell down by two scores and were able to uh, provide a flood of scoring after that. Jeremy Batten, the place kicker, will get the snap, and ooh, that was a – Bit of a sweater, uh, it made, made you sweat, I should say, uh, but it still went through the uprights and good as the low snap was held all right, and Batten sends it through for the extra point. Seven to nothing, Blazers after the first drive. Pirates going to get the first possession of the football game here, in, uh, their first possession of the football game here in a moment. Well, and you just have to get that ball over the crossbar, and that one squeaked over the bar, but it's all a process. You have a snap that has to be executed nearly perfectly a hold that needs to be near perfect and the kick of course is muscle memory and that you see the kickers warming up on the sidelines often in fact will herps practicing a little bit of punting right now in the kicking net on the pirate sideline a little early though as we're getting ready to start this possession 
But you're always got to be prepared if you're a skill guy. You, you never know when a quick third down is going to pop up and you're going to be needed to kick it on fourth. You need to be loose. Especially considering Will Earps, who was a guest on SU Football Weekly this week, who's also punter responsibilities. So Castilla and Biggers are back to return this one. Batten will send this one low, and it will be taken by – well, was going to be taken by one of the upmen here as taking it through his Biggers, and he gets across the 25-yard line. That could have ended up a lot worse than it did, and the Pirates will take their starting field at the 27-yard line. That actually was Elijah Norris, I'm sorry, number four on the return. He was back deep along with Castilla. Not the greatest field position, but you'll take it. The Pirate offense has been able to work the ball down the field pretty effectively over the last couple of games, and we'll see what they can do here on this drive. Well, Andrew Gilpin will lead the offense out. Gilpin has Zach Volo in the backfield with him. Two receivers on both sides, first and 10 from their own 27-yard line. Biggers goes in motion as the snap comes out to Gilpin. He'll roll out to the left and then pass it deep to the right, and it is caught by Volo, and he gets it into Bellhaven territory on the first play from scrimmage for the Pirates. That's a well-designed play. All the action for the offense was moving to the, Bell, or the uh, Pirate side of the field, and the running back just released a little wheel route on the other side. Gilpin just turned and flipped it to him for a nice gain in a first down. Pirates will have a huddle here as Gilpin comes in with the play call. First and ten Pirates already in Bellhaven territory at the 46-yard line. Trips left, single receiver to the right. Anthony Stevens is a single receiver on the right side, and he's joined by Biggers, who goes in motion. Gilpin rolls out to the left. He completes the pass at the 40-yard line, and coming down with that one is Adrian Garza. Solid gain of five yards on first down. A nice little out route. Gilpin delivered the ball exactly where it needed to be to be caught by Garza. He caught it at the 40, but then he angled back to the 42 where he was pushed out of bounds. So that was actually about only a gain of four. Second and six here for the Pirates. Trips right, single receiver to the left. Gilpin. Rolls to the right and then tosses to Garza. Garza tries to make a man miss, but he is tackled after only a gain of one. Making the stop for Bellhaven was Corey Tolliver. Yeah, that was a nice play by Tolliver. Garza had a little bit of space out in front of him. If he could just get out of the reach of the outstretched arms of Tolliver, but was unable to do so as that shoestring tackle makes it third down in about five. From the 41-yard line, Pirates in Bellhaven territory, third and five. It's a big third down here. Play action. Gilpin under pressure. He's going to tuck it and follow the left side, and he will get the first down as he crosses the 35-yard line. He took a hit and bounced right back up, and the chains move for the Pirates on third down. That's a good hard nose play by Landry Gilpin. He knew what he needed to gain to continue this drive, get a new set of downs. He lowered his shoulder. He did not even think about sliding and picked up the first down. That moves the ball to the 34-yard line. Pirates and Blazers territory. Dawson Gonzalez in the backfield as Garza goes in motion. Gilpin will throw to the right side and is dropped by Biggers as the throw is a little behind him. And then he was going to get hit right away. So in a weird way, it kind of works out that he dropped the pass. It stops the clock at 10.07 left to play in the first quarter and actually probably keeps the loss of yards that might have happened right there on that sort of, uh, not a bubble route, but just a quick catch in the backfield. A little tunnel screen is what it was, and the defense there for Bellhaven read that wisely. Biggers also tried to run without the ball before it arrived. Gilpin will drop back on second and ten. He throws it out to the right side. Dawson Gonzalez can't come down with the catch, and it falls incomplete. He takes a big shot from the linebacker, Connor Fordham. Two pass was too, hall, too tall. It stretched him out. And, and kind of strung him out there for Fordham to take a shot, firing up the Bellhaven Blazer sideline. It's third and long, but this is probably four down territory if you're the Pirates. So you probably have two plays to convert here. 
Yeah, and the ball on the 34-yard line, third and 10, you're right. I think the Pirates don't mind maybe only picking up five or six on this play. Of course, they'd love the first down, too. Two receivers on both sides from the middle of the field. Garza goes in motion. Gilpin takes a snap play action, and he tosses it down the left side on look for Ethan Powell, and just a bit ahead of Ethan Powell. Incomplete clock stops at 10 minutes on the button here in the first quarter. It kind of shows that they were willing to or knew that they were going to call uh, a second or a play on fourth down if they didn't convert there on third because they tried to get it all to Powell down the left sideline. Just not there. Good coverage by the – Blazer defense. Joey Robinson checks in, comes in with the play as Mason Biggers exits the ball game. Fourth and ten, ball on the 34-yard line. Pirates already picked up a third down conversion, looking for a fourth down conversion as the corners press on the right side. Gilpin will drop back, taking the pass, looking to pass, and he passes to the left side, and it's broken up, intended for Garza. There defensively was Faison lock, and with the lockdown, he forces the fourth down turnover on downs. That was the play was phase on lock because the pass was there. It was on target, and Garza definitely had an opportunity to catch that within the field of play, which would have picked up the first down and then some. Instead, a good play by Locke, and the Bellhaven Blazers have the football again on their side of the field. Got a little way to travel, and the Pirate defense getting ready to, to make a stop here. First and 10 for the Blazers, their last timeout. There was a 48-yard touchdown pass to Michael Simpson from their quarterback, Asa Gunla. And Asa Gunla now in the shotgun. He started out under center. But he's been in the shotgun for a little bit here, and he bobbles the snap, and then he's under pressure, and he's just going to trip under his own power for a loss to the 32-yard line. He just tried to minimize that loss. He, the snap was to his right. He, he tipped it and went straight down, was able to gain it. Bernard Century there to make sure that he did lose at least two yards. Yeah, it was a loss of two, so it brings up second and 12. Clock moving here, 9.29 left to play in the first. And a traditional huddle broken by the Blazers. You don't see many of those these days. With the clap and everything. Two men in the backfield with Asa Gunla. And it's a zone read. It took him a moment to give it to Foley. Foley dances around, gets past the trenches, and finds his way to the 38-yard line before he's brought down on the run. Yeah, that was a little bit of a, a battle between us, Agunla and Foley, for who was going to carry that football. They both kind of wanted it. Foley able to get a nice gain and make it third and manageable about six, maybe seven yards. Six yards. Big third down here for the Pirates as they're trying to get their defense off of the field. Third and six ball on the Blazers' own 38-yard line. Asa Gunla in the shotgun. He has two receivers on both sides, a one-step drop, and it's going to be a draw for Asa Gunla. And he spins close to that yard to gain, but only gets to the 42-yard line, and that brings up fourth down. Senior Ben Brockman coming up to fill the hole. Asa Gunla almost got by him, but Brockman able to reach that paw out there and grab a foot, cause him to fall down and force a punt here by Bellhaven. Guards are going to return this one. Adrian Garza waits around the 25-yard line. He'll even backpedal a little further to the 20. Garza, a freshman out of Edinburgh. Andrew Norton will punt this one. The ball will be snapped to the 42-yard line. Norton waiting around the 30, and that's where he kicks it away. It's a spiraling punt that bounces in favor of the Blazers across the 20 to the 15. Rolls a little bit further to about the 13 or the 12. See where it's officially downed. But a good punt there by Norton to go ahead and pin the Pirates deep for this second offensive drive. You have to be satisfied with that if you're Bellhaven. Nice punt. And it was a smart play by Garza not to attempt to field that as the Blazer coverage was down in the area. And any type of muff or uh, drop of the ball would have potentially turned it over to the Blazers. 7.36 left to play in the first quarter. Landry Gilpin and the offense come back out. Trips to the right, single receiver to the left, and Ethan Powell. Gilpin has Tasigui in the backfield with him. 
And Gilpin trying to evade some pressure. He's going to just scramble around the pocket and get rid of it to the right side. Throws an interception at the 30-yard line. Intercepting that one was Corey Tolliver. And that is definitely not what you want in that situation. Turning it over in, on your own side of the field at the 30-yard line. Bellhaven already up 7 nothing. Has an opportunity to take advantage of a short field. Well, and, and that's the benefit sometimes. There's a, a bad side to the effectiveness of, of Landry Gilpin in the pocket and, and the ability to move with his feet. He was able to avoid a lot of pressure and make an attempt on the throw. Unfortunately, Tolliver was there and had position to uh, out-jump the Pirate receiver and make the interception. And now you have your back against the wall for the Pirate defense. Two receivers to the right, a single receiver to the left. Asa Gunla in the shotgun from his own 30. He'll roll out to the right and throw it across the middle, jumping high and coming down with the catch. A really good one from the wide receiver, Jeremy Batten. Big receiver, 6'5", 207. Showed that he also has quite a bit of vertical. That pass from Asa Gunla was pretty high, but he went up, climbed the ladder, and came down with it. It's going to be first and goal now for the Blazers. And the Pirate defense really needs to stiffen here and force a field goal attempt if they can. Clock moving at 7.03 left to play in the first quarter. First and goal from the six. An eye formation at that. Yeah, we feel like we're in the 90s. Asa Gunla has a fullback behind him who goes in motion slightly. And he'll give the handoff and... Easton stops that one from going much further as Colby Blunt got the give and advanced it about three yards inside the five. It looks like the Blazers are going to put it on their offensive line here to punch this in, able to pick up about three yards in that traditional, well, traditional for us, I formation. A little Midwestern football. That's true. Well, I mean Midwestern State. I mean Midwestern United States. And you got a little uh, – throwback to just the way the game used to be played some smash mouth football 613 left to play in the first quarter again Colby Blunt is the tailback and he'll get the give this time from Asa Gunla and he tries to trek through a crowd dives for the end zone and a touchdown for the Blazers and it was a simple lead play to the left side between the left tackle and left guard lead block by the fullback Touchdown for the Blazers and the Pirates find themselves in a similar situation that they were in last week against Louisiana College, down two scores in the first quarter. <coughs> Daniel Krosky will kick this one away. The sophomore is listed as the backup place kicker. We'll get a chance here to send the point through, and that is good to make it 14 to nothing. Pirates down here in the first quarter with 6.01 left to play. We'll be back in a moment on SHN Sports. Fourteen nothing with six oh one left to play in the first quarter. The Bellhaven Blazers already up two scores. They score on a three yard touchdown by Colby Blunt following a interception by Landry Gilpin. Here's a squib kick that is down by one of the upmen, and that one bounced away for a moment from Dawson Gonzalez and you know that was a scary moment there for as it goes off the shoulder pads. He does a good job diving on it and making sure it doesn't go anywhere. Well, and that's an example of why when when kids ask in, in, in youth football why you have to do bear crawls, that is why. Because you may have to crawl on all fours to protect that football, and that is exactly what Gonzalez did on there, to give the ball to the Pirates instead of turning it over to the Blazers down two scores. Gilpin back out there, and he'll roll out to the left on first and 10 from the 39 and just overthrows Adrian Garza. Pass is incomplete and stops the clock at 5.53 in the first. 
Justin Percy, the linebacker there in coverage. Garza was open there, the delivery a little high from Gilpin and out of reach from Garza. And so, as a result, second down clock stops at 553. But the Pirates have yet to really string together uh, several good plays like we've seen over the last three games. Second and ten. Ball saves at the 39 where the Pirates started this drive and flags will come in. False start as Mason Biggers kind of looked like it was arena football for a moment the way he cut right after the snap. And I guess the snap hadn't quite come while he started his motion. He was just slightly early and, and I was thinking Canadian football as well. You, you can, in those leagues, move towards the line of scrimmage pre-snap, but Biggers was on the line of scrimmage so when he... You know, even though it's illegal for him to move prior to the snap, moving forward at all puts him into the neutral zone, and that's what happened. Pre-snap. That backs him up five yards. Second and 15. Ball moves to the 34-yard line. Garza goes in motion, and it's an option play. Gilpin decides to keep it, and ooh, almost a horse collar tackle. Uh, I don't see a flag coming out as Gilpin only picks up a couple yards to the 36. Yeah, that was Colton Strain, big 94, and I think he realized that he was making an illegal tackle and just let go. And as a result, it looks like the referee kept the flag in his pocket and the coaching staff out talking to Gilpin on this third and long pre-play. Pirates trying to get something going as they trail 14-0. 5.03 left to play in the first quarter. Two receivers on both sides for Gilpin. Third and 13. Ball in the 36-yard line. Pirates in their own territory. Gilpin in the shotgun. Play action with Tesigui. And he's under pressure as the pocket collapses. And it's a sack for Landry Gilpin. He loses a yard to the 35. And the punting unit will have to come out for the Pirates. Credit that sack to number 90, Cooper Martin. A freshman out of West Harrison, Mississippi. Able to get back there and wrap Gilpin up before he could move in front of the pocket or within the pocket forward and try to make a delivery downfield. Watch out for this kick returner. He's got the one touchdown, or the first touchdown. That's Michael Simpson for Bellhaven. Simpson back at the 30. Herbst will punt this one away. He takes that two-step punt, and it takes a southwestern roll across the 40 to the 35, and maybe even inside the 30. I think uh, it will be down right at the 30 as it gets a long stare from the uh, Pirates uh, defensive player, or special teams player, Lee Piles. There's a flag down. That was only a 35-yard punt. The flag is in the backfield, so it may result in another attempt here from Herbst. No, it's going to go against the Pirates. They may force another punt, though. And it looks like uh, it may have even if it was pre-snap, they would have blown the play dead. So it looks like Bellhaven will accept this penalty, and it looks like it's likely was a hold because it's a 10-yard variety. Mm -hmm. The hold pushes Southwestern back, and now Herbst will have to punt this one away from about the 10 in Pirates territory. And he's got another returner back on this attempt, and that's going to be Foley and or Tolliver. This one does get returned as it'll be taken by Foley, and Foley only gets a couple yards, maybe a little bit less, as Piles, who was looking at the ball the last time, makes the tackle at the 47-yard line in Belhaven territory. It's tough to, to know who on special teams out of a defensive back and a running back that both wear number one who would be returning the kick. So it could be Foley, but it also – could be Tolliver. They didn't give us a special teams too deep for Bellhaven. Yeah, we do not know who will be returning kicks and punts for the Blazers, and you bring up a good point. We'll, we'll just go with Foley. Yeah. We'll, call, we'll flip a coin and <laughs> see what the stats say at halftime. Okay. Also, gun line, the shotgun. Two men in the backfield with them, first and 10 from the 47-yard line. And the handoff and getting – Nowhere in the backfield is blunt as he was that to the 42-yard line. That was a great job by number 33 for the Pirates, and that is uh, the defensive end, Edmundo Suarez. He almost lost the tackle and was able to uh, hang on to the running back and, and drag him down while, while assistance was on its way. 
Got a loss on the play of about five. Second and 15, ball on the 42-yard line now. Pirates defense trying to keep this score 14-0. 320 left to play in the first quarter. Two receivers to the right, a single receiver to the left. Also Gunlow in the shotgun. He'll scan to the left and throw a pass over to that left side. It's caught by Batten, and then Batten only gets back to the line of scrimmage. Might have gotten half a step forward before a slew of Pirates come in and make that stop. Looked like a hand was on the pass as it left Asa Gunline across the line of scrimmage. A Pirate got his paw up in the air, but it did not affect the trajectory of the pass, and it was still completed. But good defense by the Pirates to make a tackle quickly prevent any yards after that catch and force a third and long here. Yeah, Eli Norris is tasked with guarding Batten, who's a 6'5", 207 junior, and Norris, 5'9", 158. Third and nine, ball on the 48-yard line, Bellhaven in their own territory. It's a five-step drop for us, a gun run. He slings it deep down the left side. Flags come in here as the pass was intended for Jeremy Batten, and Eli Norris is saying that's on him. Yeah, that's unfortunate because there was a little pushing going both ways, and we'll see which way the referees make this this ruling. I think we're going to see a hold, that's actually. That's what it looks like. They're calling a hold, which would go against the Pirates. Now, you know all the rules. Would that be an automatic first down? Or it is an automatic first down. I thought so. It's and a five-yard penalty and a first down. Yeah, in this particular case, that moves Bellhaven into Pirates territory. We're going to wait for the chains to move here. The chain gang finally gets the memo. <laughs> Two minutes, 22 seconds left to play in the first quarter. Pirates trail by 14, 14 to nothing. Two receivers are at a single receiver to the left are Asa Gunla, who has Foley in the backfield with him, and he's going to follow Foley to the right side, bounces out to the right gap, and then he was stopped by Easton Feller after a pickup of about four yards on first down. A nice job by Feller to chop down the big tree. Asa Gunla coming in at six foot five, 224 pounds, and he ran that like it was a, a quarterback-designed run as opposed to earlier. Second and six, rolling out to the left. Asa Gunla slings it deep, and that one overthrown on the intended receiver, Terry Jones, but a flag in on the play. This one near the trenches, so let's see if there was something on the linebackers, perhaps. It was a little bit late. It could be in the area of a hole, but it could also be It's a chop block against Bellhaven, according to the early signal. That's a 15-yard penalty. You know, of course, the ref always has to check with Coach Austin, but, of course, Coach Austin accepts it, and... That will back them up. Yeah, it's hard to turn down 15-yarders. Uh, the situations are rare when you're going to do that. Of course, we replay second down. So the Pirates had forced third down on that incompletion, and now it'll be second in a good ways. The yard to gain is the 32, and the ball moved all the way back to the Bellhaven 46. So not only will they have to cross midfield, but Bellhaven will have to go a good way as the scoreboard does the calculation for me. It's second and 22. That's convenient when the scoreboard helps. Oh, uh, yep, especially when we're trying to do math on the fly. Here's a pass to Foley who spins away from one defender in the backfield, and then he's bumped at the line of scrimmage. And I think he gets a couple yards before he goes out of bounds as Eli Norris had to come in from the receiver he was covering to try and get that stop. And that's why you hear that, Chuck – Black helmets to the ball. And that was a great job of stringing the play out laterally and not allowing the running back to turn the ball upfield and forcing him to the boundary, and that's what happened. Third and 21. It was only a gain of one ball in the Bellhaven 47-yard line. Their yard to gain is the Southwestern 32. Minute 14 left to play in the first quarter as the clock's moving on Asa Gunla in the Blazer offense. He'll drop back for a pass on third and long, and he decides to tuck it and run. Gets across midfield, gets to the 40, and he is down. Ben Brockman saves the day because that probably would have been a first down if he couldn't get the stop. Asa Gunla, as I mentioned a few plays ago, a really big fellow, and Brockman not wrapping up but laying a large – and significant hit on Asa Gunla and preventing him from picking up the yard to gain and forcing a very long field goal attempt here. Andrew Norton will give this one a go. 56 yards. 
Garza getting back in case it's short to return it. And, and we're going to have a timeout. Yeah, the Pirates will use the first timeout of the game. And I like that call from Joe Austin <laughs> as he decides to go ahead and make sure that everybody is set. If they are going to ride with this 56-yarder, well, it's good to maybe see if there's that kick six opportunity. Well, and, and you've seen it. It's rare, but it does happen. It happened in a Alabama versus Auburn game a few years ago and gave Auburn a win late in the football game as – Alabama tried to ice it with a long field goal. So it's a similar situation, except it's not the end of the game. But if this kick is short and the opportunity is there in terms of a lot of green space for Garza, then you know he's been given the go-ahead to take off. And he's going to line up around the 10, and they're going to come out and punt instead, which is probably wise. Yeah, I figured they would. And – here it is, fourth and seven, ball on the 39-yard line. Garza back deep to receive this punt. As Norton puts his foot into it, it's an end-over-end kick. Fair catch called for by Garza at around the 12-yard line. And that was a wise play by Garza there as well. Not great field position, but had he not fielded that punt... The Blazers had a couple of players there that would have had an opportunity to down the football inside probably the five-yard line and maybe even closer to the goal line. So great, great play there. Heads up football by Garza. So Andrew Gilpin and the offense come back out. They trail 14-0. 21 seconds left to play in the first quarter. And... The Blazers ahead 14-0. I imagine only one play will be gotten off here. It is a handoff taken around left side and trying to get to the 20-yard line for the Pirates is Zach Volo, the running back, who is a 5'10", 170-pound freshman from Bernie, Texas, went to Comfort High School and this is the first time we're getting a chance to really see him as time expires here in the first quarter. The Blazers take a 14 to nothing lead over Southwestern. Southwestern will get the ball at, will start the second quarter with the ball at the 19 yard line and second down coming up. We'll be back in a moment on SHN Sports. Sheraton Austin Georgetown Hotel and Conference Center, Antioch Georgetown, Georgetown Commercial Properties, Chick fil A, Chisholm Trail Pediatrics, Georgetown Commercial Properties, and Eagle Wings are great sponsors of Pirate Athletics. Thank you to all of our sponsors. Oh, Haven uh, throws Garza to the ground out of bounds after the play, and it'll be a 15-yard penalty and a first down for the Pirates. Here's the referee's call, personal foul. Of course, again, that called on Corey Tolliver as Landry Gilpin took the snap and rolled to his right, looking downfield to throw. Nothing downfield, so he flipped it over to Adrian Garza, who picked up about three yards before he was tossed out of bounds by Foley. So it'll be first and ten for the Pirates from their own 36-yard line. Gilpin in a shotgun formation. 
He'll bring a receiver, Biggers, in motion and take the snap and roll to his right, fakes the throw to Biggers, runs back to his left on a broken play. He's at the 40. He cuts out at midfield, cuts back up in Bellhaven territory down to about the 43-yard line where he's stopped by number 31, Justin Perry, the 5'9", 177-pound senior out of Bellhaven. And we have a blazer injury at the moment. And so the Pirates will come to the sideline here after the nice gain by Gilpin picking up a first down on the broken play. And we'll take a moment here, hope all is well with the Bellhaven Blazer defender as he is being attended to by the Bellhaven medical staff. With 14-27 remaining here in the half, our score is 14-0. The Blazers are on top of the Pirates. Pirates putting together a couple of good plays here on this drive coming into the second quarter. And this is a similar uh, uh, story, the way that it's, it's unfolding as, as what happened last week. The Pirates fell down 13 to Louisiana College and then roared back with 31 unanswered. And it started with a nice drive being led by Gilpin Runs. And here we are today. And a nice run by Gilpin on the last play gives the Pirates first down in Bell T Bellhaven territory at the 43-yard line. Well, thank you for taking over there no for problem. a little bit, Chuck, as we're trying to get that broadcast angle back up. A couple of good plays by the Pirates, along with a penalty by the Blazers that pushed the Pirates into Bellhaven territory here for a first down. First and 10 for the Pirates at the 43-yard line in Bellhaven territory. Gilpin in the shotgun. He has Dawson Gonzalez to his right. And it's a give here on the end around and trying to get it to the 40-yard line for Southwestern. Uh, first handoff of the day for Ethan Powell. Yeah, you don't see Ethan Powell get many jet sweep handoffs. He's a big receiver, and generally you try to find him on the edges or downfield. And so the Pirate coaching staff trying to – show a little bit of a surprise and the skill sets available for Ethan Powell. He has some speed for that size. Able to pick up three yards on the end around. Second and seven, ball on the 40-yard line. Pirates trying to score here in the second quarter for the first time in the ball game as Biggers goes in motion. A rollout to the left very briefly, but then Gilpin decides to go to the right side, and then he lobs it deep, making the catch, coming down, no flag, as I thought maybe he might have gotten all the way with a little push-off. Eric Ovalli comes up with a big catch for the Pirates to get him in the red zone for the first time this afternoon. Well, I think the referee kept the flag in his pocket because there was contact and pushing by both Ovalli and the Blazer defender. And Ovalli just happened to get the last push and a little bit of separation and great concentration to come down with that pass as it was right in his hands right after the contact. First and goal, Pirates. Eric Ovalli with his first reception of the season, the 6'3 senior from Laredo, Texas, with a big catch, puts the Pirates first and goal at the three. And a counter here as it is a run to the right side that is eaten up on the give to Brady French, and yep. I think they lose a yard to the four. Big 94, Colton Strain, the senior out of Clinton, Louisiana. The Pirate offensive line were unable to uh, root him out of the middle, and he made a big play there to swallow the running back and force a second and goal and a loss of one. Clock moving here, 12-22 left to play in the second quarter. Empty backfield here for Landry Gilpin. Trips right. Tied in on the right side is Joey Robinson. Gilpin roll out to the left. He's going to decide to tuck it and run. Looking for some space as he gets a block from Stevens in the end zone for a touchdown. A flag comes in. Stevens will be called for the hold. And that's unfortunate because I thought it was a good block and it was a great play call by the Pirate offensive coaching staff. They had seen something on film and knew that defensive end was going to try to come around if they left him unblocked. Gilpin, knowing that, did a little spin out and with his speed, knew he could run to the corner. Unfortunately, the Pirates suffer a penalty. And it looks like there is an injured Pirate on the field. So they'll tack on the penalty yardage back to the 14-yard line. 
It's where the ball is placed for the next play. So it'll be second and goal from the 14, while this Pirate is 10-2. We'll step aside here on SHN Sports. Twelve oh four left to play in the second quarter. The Blazers lead it fourteen to nothing over the Pirates, but Southwestern now following the penalty yards. I guess they originally marked it off from the previous line of scrimmage and then decided it was from the spot of the foul, which is a hold typically. So it'll be first, second and goal from the eleven. Gilpin takes a snap, thought about a quarterback draw, and he stumbles in the backfield, stays on his feet, but then he'll be brought down from behind making the tackle for Bellhaven his big old number 97 Carlton Brown the sophomore defensive line from Memphis Tennessee with a big play for the Bellhaven defense pushes Southwestern back to the 18 yard line and of course the Pirates here don't want to give up a turnover and miss an opportunity for a Will Arps field goal because we're still very early in this football game early in the second quarter but you want to try to get down and Give yourself at least a decision. Do we kick a field goal or do we go for it here on fourth? Third and, 18, third and goal from the 18. Gilpin will take the snap, roll out to the right. He has a little bit of time to throw as it's a coverage defense, and Gilpin will get it across the 15, deciding to tuck it and run, and only gets it to the 12 for fourth down, and Will Herps will come out and take the points. And credit Gilpin there. He didn't try to fo force the football downfield to a receiver that was covered. The Bellhaven Blazers had pretty good coverage in their secondary. And Gilpin wanted to make sure to give Will Earps this opportunity here to break the scoreless uh, status of the Pirates right now. They'll break the seal somehow. Erps with a 29-yard field goal attempt has it blocked and it's picked up here by Bellhave and they get it across the 40. Nobody in front of him. I don't think he's going to be caught as it is a man taking it to the 20 for the Pirates and or for the Blazers and I believe that is T.J. Hursley, the defensive back sophomore, blocking the punt and then returning it about 80 yards for the Blazers touchdown and they take a momentary momentarily 20 to nothing lead no flags on the play that ball bounced right back into his hand the if you could have designed the worst scenario for the pirates on that play it occurred there and that was a block that was scooped up by the blocker and full stride so before a pirate could even turn to try to get an angle on him he was already 15 yards downfield may have to rush out there extra point unit as I guess they weren't all ready to go as Krosky will line up the point after attempt. Krosky gets the hold and that is through the uprights and good. So the blocked field goal attempt leads to six points. Call it seven now for the Blazers, and they have a 21 to nothing lead over well, Southwestern. 10-27 left to go. a 10-point swing on one play because the, the Pirates behind the leg of Earps were likely to cut the lead to 14-3, to but instead now they're down 21-0. to And they have their work cut out for them, but there's still plenty of football to be played even in this half. The Pirates' offense is explosive enough that they can make up this difference with what remains in this half, let alone the time that we have in the second half. But they're going to have to step up a little bit defensively and prevent the Blazers from even getting many first downs and trying to string together a drive because the Pirate offense is going to need the football. Well, last week against Louisiana College in Louisiana, they came back from down two touchdowns. Do I hear three here with 10:27 left to play in the second quarter? The Bellhaven Blazers lead it 21 to nothing. Eli Norris and Mason Biggers back deep to receive this kick 
from Kroski, who's not really given them an opportunity to return it. And this one will again be another short one that will be taken by one of the upmen and taken across the 30 and getting stopped short of the 35 for Southwestern. That is, again, Zach Volo. Or I guess that could be Zach Moon. It was Zach somebody for I think Southwestern. It's, it's Zach Velo. I think you're right because he's in a, a return position. And, of course, Moon and linebacker. Not that linebackers can't return kicks, but that's not a typical – position that you you start choosing kick returners from remember it was one of the up men but i guess they've been preparing for that as they realize they're not going to get too many opportunities to there's get enough to their there's main enough returners. scouting film of good kick returns from the pirates that the teams that the pirates have faced are, are trying to prevent that southwestern will take over at their own 34 yard line first and 10 for gilpin who thought about rolling out to the left he was cut off and now decides to tuck it and run tries to take it around the left end where his offensive line would be and manages to pick up about five yards on first downs and that's the awareness of the pocket presence of landry gilpin and he also did a couple of spins to pick up about two more yards at the end of that play as defenders tried to bring him down he uses his momentum to swing around and get another couple of yards Got to hang on to that football, and he's done a good job so far. Second and six. Ball on the 38-yard line. And flag stop this play as Garza was about to go in motion. And we have a timeout called by Bellhaven. Their first charge of the first half. The scoreboard says that the Pirates have all three, but I believe they've used one so far. They have. So, and they were, yeah. It's when Bellhaven looked like they were going to attempt the very long field goal. That's right. And... So at the moment, it's 9.42 left to play in the second quarter. And we'll go ahead and just kind of banter here, Chuck, as the Pirates find themselves down 21 nothing. But it seems to be kind of just bad breaks, and they do not seem like they're losing that much, if that makes sense. It's, it does appear to be even in terms of level of play. However, you're right, and it's not even self-inflicted wounds that have hurt the Pirates tonight or today. It is just bad breaks. And good plays by Bellhaven in certain situations, like the blocked punt and return for a touchdown we just saw. Gilpin. Second and six. Garza goes in motion, and it's a counter to Tasigui, and he was able to find yards to the 40. Picks up about a yard and a half. Yeah, wasn't a whole lot there. Big number 90, Cooper Martin, to prevent much of a gain. Playing the right end for the Blazers. They have a pretty good sized line on both sides of the ball, but the Pirates have done well in the trenches thus far. But again, haven't really been able to turn that into points to this point. Third and four, and it's a big third down for the Pirates. They want to try and get on the scoreboard before. They go into the locker rooms. Two receivers on both sides. Garza goes in motion left to right. Gilpin rolls out and decides to pass it to the right side. It's completed at 50 for the, the 50 for a first down as Anthony Stevens rolls into Bellhaven territory and is downed officially at the 48. And that was just a good pass by Gilpin. Stevenson had found a, a, a little area in the zone where he sat down, but he had defenders on both sides of him. So Gilpin, with an errant pass, would have found a little trouble on that play, but he was able to lace it into Anthony Stevens. Clock moving here. Eight and a half minutes left to play in the first half. First and ten ball at the 48-yard line. Garza goes in motion, and it'll be a fake handoff from Gilpin, and then he lets it fly down the field. It's caught by Oliveira, and he gets it into the end zone for a touchdown, a 48-yard touchdown, and Eric Olave gets the big senior day touchdown. He's only made two catches all season. They come in this first half. And two big catches in this game. And that particular one, he had a defender that had pulled on him. So when the ball was arriving, he was a little out of position, but he was able to get his arms around in front of him and come up with a big catch, maintain his balance, and carry it in for the goal. Earps will attempt the point after for the Pirates here. Remember the last time he attempted to kick, it was blocked. Snap hold kick is up and Herps with the extra point. And just like that, the Pirates are only down two scores again, 21 to 7. And it's really big. It had that 
blocked field goal to tip not occurred. It could be 14 to 10 at the moment. But again, there's plenty of football to play, and we've seen the Pirates roar back from down as recently as last week. And so we expect a similar surge offensively from the Pirates. And of course, the defense will need to come out and do their job here as the Pirates will be ready to kick off to Bellhaven back deep to receive for the Blazers is going to be number 81 and that is Michael Simpson and he's going to be joined by number 18 and that's Nigel Owens Erps will do the honors to kick off here for the Pirates we apologize for losing both cameras so far we'll try to get both of them up here in a moment So Herbst is lining up to kick here for the Pirates. We apologize for losing both cameras momentarily there. Herbst will send this one away from the 35-yard line. And this one high and short taken. Well, line gets to the 18-yard line and coming up to make that catch was, I believe, Kobe Blunt. And he gets it just short of the 25-yard line. Eight eleven left to play in the first half. 21-7. Blazers lead the Pirates. We'll see if the Pirate defense can maintain the momentum for their club here after that big play by Olali from Gilpin. They're back into their traditional under center offense as Asa Gunla gives the handoff to Foley, and Foley fights through the middle to pick up yards across the 25. Edmundo Suarez there on the stop for the Pirates to make sure not more is gained on that play. They're happy letting the clock roll here to try and take this large lead into the locker room. 7.46 left to play in the first half here. And also Gunla moves back into the shotgun. He'll hand it off and spinning for a first down, Foley gets to, or excuse me, not spinning for a first down, spinning for a couple yards, gets to the 29-yard line, Foley. So the Pirates here have a big third down to try to get the football back for their offense who were feeling it after that big play in the drive, a pretty big drive to open the second period. Trying to get the fans into it. The fans are in the stands is Patrick Nicholas. Asagunla in the shotgun. Rolls out to the left and decides to pass. It's completed to Foley for the first down across the 35-yard line, and he's out of bounds at the 38. That play really tough to defend for the Pirates. They came to the wide side of the field. You had to be concerned about Asagunla taking off and trying to pick up the first down himself. Foley found an opening just beyond the line to gain and got open. And nice delivery by Asa Gunla to keep this drive alive for the Blazers. Asa Gunla in the shotgun. Brockman showing blitz. Zone read and a handoff to Foley. And Foley is brought down in the backfield by Patrick Nicholas. And he was able to drag Nicholas a couple yards across the 40 to the 41. Nicholas did a good job of coming off of his blocker to make that play. Otherwise, there would have been much more to gain for the running back. See if the Pirates can force a third down with a stop here on second. 5.50 left to play in the second quarter. Asagano in the shotgun, two receivers to the left, single receiver to the right, and a blitz being shown here by the Pirates, and a quick pass out to the right side, completed for the first down and more, and high-stepping his way out of bounds after making the completed pass for Bellhaven was Kenny Brown. 
Yeah, for, they, they have a lot of freshmen contributing on this football team today, and that's one of them. Nice catch on the sidelines by Brown to keep this drive moving. Seems like they want to pick up their tempo a little bit here. 5.30 left to play in the first. It's a first and 10 from the Pirates' 41-yard line, and also Gunla decides to have a design quarterback run and only picks up about a yard to the 45. In fact, I think they say there's no gain on the play officially on the sideline. Yeah, Jay Hanna was having none of that quarterback run as he had a blocker in his way and still was able to make the tackle through the blocker. Good effort by the defensive end for the Pirates. They that's do how, give that's how a, you set an edge. They, they do give him a yard to the 45. So the officials eventually end up communi communicating on it. Under five minutes to play in the first half. Also, Gunla has trips left, single receiver to the right. Fakes the handoff to Foley, decides to keep it, and has an option with Blunt, and then he is dragged down from behind Ben Brockman with the tackle to stop that from being a first down. And that was a good athletic play from Brockman because Usa Gunla put a little bit of a move on Brockman and had him off balance. And when he cut back inside, Brockman was still able to change his body momentum back to the center of the field, get his hands on the hips of Asa Gunla and drag the big fella down shy of the first down and force a third down here where the Pirate defense can get a stop and is likely not going to be four down territory here at the 40, although it's hard to say at this point. Third and three, ball on the 39-yard line in Pirates territory. Bellhaven trying to add to a 21-7 lead. Also, Gunlow with the zone read will give it to Blunt, and Blunt will be dragged down at the 35-yard line by Ludeman. And Ludeman making a big tackle, but not before Blunt was able to pick up the line to gain at the 35 for a first down. So the Pirates have given Bellhaven another four downs here to try to continue this drive down the field. And the Pirates, the more time that defense spends on the field, the more tired they get here in the heat. And the offense is itching to get back out there after the big play on their last possession. Trips right, tight end on the left side. Asagunla in the shotgun. He's going to follow his block on the left side and get across the 35. And it was Ludeman and Norris combining for the stop there at the 33. And you can tell Elijah Norris uh, not super enthused about tackling the big fella, but he puts his shoulder into him and makes sure he gets no further forward progress. I'm sure it's not fun tackling a 6'5", 230-pound quarterback. Two fifty-six left to play in the first half. And now Bellhaven will slow it down a little bit. Ten seconds on the play clock as they break the huddle. Second and eight. Ball on the Pirates' 33-yard line. Asa Gunla has two men in the backfield with him. Foley to his left, Blunt to his right. And he'll drop back for a pass. Throws down the left sideline. And making an almost making the diving catch as he had it for a moment. Jeremy Batten couldn't complete the process of the catch and falls incomplete stopping the clock at 234 and bringing up third down. It was a great effort by the receiver, but Elijah Norris also had a great effort and was able to get in there and make contact with the receiver as he hit the ground to ensure that that catch was not completed. And so it is third and long. And the Pirates have an opportunity here. They'll probably have to stop two plays here by the Blazers, although the Blazers did demonstrate they have confidence in their field goal kick from a distance, at least in a fake situation. Third and eight ball on the 33-yard line. And Asa Gunla will have a quarterback draw, and that is not going to go anywhere as the big hit laid on him. And coming in is Edmondo Suarez, and that is no gain officially on the play and brings up fourth down and I think decision time here for South for the Bellhaven Blazers as well, Blaine Asa, McCorkle has an option. Well, he's going to go for it. it looks yeah, like. Asa Gunlow has stayed out there. And so, as I mentioned, this may be two down territory as you get near the 30. And it looks like Bellhaven will be attempting to convert a first down here on fourth and eight. Minute 54 left to play in the first half, and it looks like Asagunla will go for the pooch punt. Nobody back deep to receive, although the coverage is there to maybe down it, and it looks like it might have been touched by Batten at the five or six on his knee, and that does seem to be where the well, officials will mark it down. You see a marker thrown around the six. Well, they're going to discuss the rule because 
that while Bellhaven touched it, the ball still continued into the end zone, and I'm not sure exactly what that rule is going to be. So the Pirates will either have it on the 6 or it will come out to the 25, and that's why they're having a discussion. They want to make sure they get the ruling correct. That is a signal for a touchback, but it does look like – the White Hat says it is a touchback right. here, so that moves the ball to the 20. And that's where Landry Gilpin and the Pirates offense will try and cut into this Blazers 21-7 lead with a minute 42 left to play until halftime. Had, had they been able to stop the momentum of the football from crossing the goal line, that ball would have been downed at the six. But it did continue into the end zone. Trips left, single receiver to the right for Gilpin. He'll throw it over to the right side, and the pass intended for Avale is incomplete. He kind of sidearmed that one, and it was well short of reaching his intended target. Well, that play looked like it was intended for Ovale alone, and when Gilpin looked that way and saw the coverage provided was tight by number 11, uh, T.J. Hersey, he went on ahead and just threw it where nobody could catch it. Trips right, single receiver to the left, second and 10 from the 20. Gilpin drops back, and it'll decide to scan a little bit longer. Now he'll run across the 20 to the 25 angles for the first down. Gets it at around the 31-yard line. And he showed some real speed there as Isaiah Blackman, the big linebacker, was making up ground on him when he made that initial move to get outside. And he separated from the linebacker as he went out of bounds. That also stops the clock at a minute 32 left to play here in the first half. Pirates have two timeouts left. Two receivers on both sides from the left hash. Mark Gilpin will take a couple steps in the pocket, and now he'll roll out to the right. And at the last moment decides to pass it to Mason Biggers, who completes it and runs out of bounds at the 41-yard line. It's another Pirates first down with a minute 25 left on the clock as it stops thanks to the out route and the brains of Mason Biggers to get out of bounds. And that's the two-minute offense for you. You see the Pirates working it pretty well here. Two plays in a row. Big gains, stopping the clock first on a first down run, stepping out of bounds was Gilpin, and then next Gilper, uh, Gilpin to Biggers on the uh, sideline here out of bounds. From the right hash mark, first and 10 from the Pirates' own 41-yard line. Gilpin has time to throw, and now he'll roll out to the right under pressure. He just lets this one fly out of play and grounds it. So that stops the clock at a minute 18 and brings up second down. He just wanted to make sure that he did not lose any yardage on that play, so he just flipped it out of play. It was well out of the pocket, and the football, of course, delivered plenty beyond the line of scrimmage to prevent any kind of penalty call. Powell and Garza line up on the left side. Stevens and Biggers line up on the right side. Gilpin and the shotgun motions French over to the left. Second and 10 from the 41. Pirates in their own territory trying to score here. Down two touchdowns. Gilpin draws a flag as he completes a pass to Mason Biggers. And I get the feeling this is coming back on a variety of a hold. Well, it was in the area where a hold is typically called. It could also be a chop block in that vicinity. It is going to be a hold. I said Gilpin draws the flag. Uh, I suppose it was partly because he probably might not, might have gotten away with the quote-unquote hold had he released it a little bit longer, but it seemed like the official decided that it had gone on long enough and throw it. So, you know, as an offensive lineman, you got to block until you hear that whistle. Yep, and, he, and Gilpin had to bounce around that block attempt, and so the referee's field division was right at it. Second and 20 on the 31 now for the Pirates. Gilpin has time to throw, slings it to the left. It's Ethan Powell pretty much regaining those penalty yards at the 41-yard line. It will be a 10-yard completion and bring up third down, but nothing stops your momentum like penalties, and I think the Pirates are going to use a timeout here. Yeah, they will. Their second charge timeout of the first half stops the clock at 57 ticks until halftime. Well, there's still plenty of time for the Pirates to get the ball downfield. They're going to need to convert a first down here in the next two plays in order to keep opportunity alive. And they're discussing what they want to do here on third down. I think they'd be satisfied and likely go for it on fourth if they don't get the full 10 yards here on third down. However, 
there is still enough time for that Blazer offense to get an opportunity if you don't convert on fourth down. So that's likely the discussion here. And I bet the attempt to gain the first down is going to be here on third down. And depending on what results from that play will just dictate what the Pirates do, whether or not they decide to punt, if they gain nothing on third down, or if they get close to the first down, whether or not they will uh, go for it on fourth. And they're coming out of the timeout ready to go. 57 seconds left in the first half. Gilpin in the shotgun, two receivers on both sides. Garza goes in motion left to right. And Gilpin will roll out to the right. He is under pressure, and he'll take the sack instead of trying to throw up a potential iron T. And he loses yards to the 31-yard line. It brings up fourth down, and Will Herbst will have to punt. And give Emmanuel Stanley the linebacker credit on that sack, number 57. But Gilpin had three Bellhaven Blazers bearing down on him as he rolled towards the center of the field and decided to just go on ahead and take the sack. And that obviously will force the Pirates to punt here. But they're going to make sure – well, I guess Bellhaven called a timeout. But they were going to definitely let as much time tick off the clock as they could before they punted. Because of the time, they'll come out and discuss where they're going to strategically punt the football and what kind of coverage needs to occur to prevent any kind of significant return and prevent Bellhaven from having any momentum here with, you know, just seconds on the clock. And I believe I heard that correctly. The... Game clock will have to be reset to 38 seconds. So it's even fewer seconds. And that seems more accurate. Well, that'll help out the Pirates, I guess. But Bellhaven with two timeouts left. Southwestern with one. Probably won't use it here. Foley waiting back deep to receive. Yeah, the only way they're going to use that timeout is if there's some kind of turnover on this punt that they're able to gain possession of. And, you know, they'll, of course, use it with the offense. And Herps coming out to punt. And there's a, another timeout. So they let the clock run down to 16 seconds and called timeout again. I'm honestly a little bit of conf confused here. Also trying to troubleshoot some things to make sure our broadcast goes a little smoother. Sorry about that, y'all. But at, at the moment, the Blazers have one timeout left and the Pirates have another. And what started with 48 seconds, now all the way down to 16 seconds. So that's and good the, news for the Pirates, a, yeah, I take it. Yeah, and then another timeout burn. So the clock was moving as the Pirates got ready to line up to punt and then Bellhaven burned another timeout. Or, or the Pirates did before the, the play clock stopped, actually. Before they got a penalty. So if Herps can get a nice, nice punt off here, there won't be much time for the Blazers. Michael Simpson back deep to receive this punt from Herps. And... Bellhaven asking for a flag, and it might be a false start against the Pirates here. And there was a, a late flag. Must have been some movement in the backfield because I didn't see anything at the line of scrimmage. So with 17 seconds left now, this punt a little bit harder for Herps. That looked like more than five yards that he that he walked off on that. It's now at the – yeah, I was about to say, it's now at the 21. It, it should be at the 26. Yeah, he, he actually penalized 10 yards against the Pirates, and they're getting it right now. But Herbs will take the deep snap, and rugby-style kicks it. It'll bounce at midfield and take a Pirates roll towards the 35-yard line, and then it starts to roll for Bellhaven, and – 
You still want to let the, the, that, that you want to give up that extra yard that it rolls for Bellhaven for the seconds that burn off the clock there before you stop it. You're a very smart man there, Chuck Crazy. Seven seconds left to play in the second half, and I guess it doesn't matter if it's a yard or two, as the Blazers will probably just have one play, perhaps maybe two. Sure, and you want to burn you. You know, obviously on that punt, you wanted to burn as much time as possible because you want to only give them one play. With seven seconds, they may get two, depending on how quickly the pass is released. Unlikely, though, it will probably only be this one play is, is what's most likely. doesn't even look like they're interested in taking a play as Asa Gunlow looks like he's ready for victory formation to take this 21-7 lead into the locker rooms. And it's a fake and a handoff, and the Pirates – not going to allow anything cheap to go by them. We'll go ahead and make that tackle. I didn't quite catch who the ball handler was in that situation. And and everybody disperses before we get a chance to see who it was at the bottom yeah, of the pile I, anyway. I saw who it was. It, it was actually uh, Colby Blunt, one of the running backs. But it was a, a bit of a fumble ruski play as they set it up to be a, you know, we're going to kneel the ball and go to halftime play. But instead... Tried to catch the Southwestern Pirates off guard, and the defense was not buying it, and they were able to alertly make the tackle a blunt after a minimal gain. Well, after two quarters complete, it is 21-7 here on SHN Sports. The Bellhaven Blazers leading the Southwestern Pirates. We'll be back in a moment on SHN Sports. We have a really good group of seniors this year. First of all, they've all been Southwestern men. Loving, mature, committed, sacrificing, passionate, relentless, courageous, and honorable. Something they can be proud of, something that their parents can be proud of. On the field, they've played for the first two teams to be in the national polls. They'll be able to look back with a sense of pride and achievement. Maybe most importantly, they've led us through this pandemic experience. And as, as everyone knows that follows our team, it's been, been quite an eventful year. They've always been diligent. They've always been hardworking. And they've always had a growth mindset. And it's really helped our football team 
get through one of the roughest periods of, uh, of college football in history. So thank you to our seniors. Thank you to their parents and families that have supported them. We're going to miss each of you. I'm really appreciative and can't say thank you enough to my parents. They've been there from the beginning, going to all the different sports games that I've played in. They do their best they can to get to every single game I play, and I'm really appreciative and forever will be grateful. For this season, I'm specifically thankful for everyone involved in the athletics program, not just for football, but everyone that's done everything they can to get all the athletes being able to play their seasons. For us, specifically, I want to thank the coaches, the equipment staff, the student trainers, the film crew, everyone that's been a part of being able to play week in and week out. I really thank you. I just want to thank uh, my parents, my family so much. They've gone through so much um, just to support me and to give me my opportunity to live out my dream playing college football. I can't be more grateful to them and just to this university, to our coaches and to everyone that's supported us on this team. Um, I'm so blessed for the opportunities I've had here at Southwestern. Thank you so much to everyone that supported us along the way. Love y'all. I just like to give thanks to my family. My friends, everyone who gave the opportunity to play this beautiful game, and I want to take my dad who passed away recently, and I just want to give thanks for these last few weeks, and I appreciate every, every opportunity I've been given. Thank you to all the coaches, and everyone here in Southwestern who tries to make the name of Crosser Chess great, and I thank everyone. I just want to thank my parents for all they've done for me over the years, uh, my grandparents uh, for all of y'all's support, going to every single game, and I really appreciate everything y'all have done for me. Um, I just want to say thank you to my parents, my sister, and my grandparents for being at almost every game that I've ever uh, I've ever had uh, here, at, here at college. I also want to say thanks to my coaches for giving me this chance and this opportunity to play college football. I never thought I'd get to this point. Big shout out to my my close friends. I mean, they y'all know who y'all are, and uh, I love you guys. Thanks for sticking with me over this past year, past few years. Um, whenever I needed it most. Thank you just to everyone else who's helped me along the way. I really appreciate it. Go Bucks. First of all, I'd like to thank the people who are here for me today, my dad, my sister, and my friends, Davin Master and Lawson Piles. I would also like to thank all of my friends here at South Southwestern University. And I would like to thank my teammates, not only here at Southwestern, but throughout my time uh, as a football player. I'd also like to thank all of my coaches that I've ever had. Um, uh, I'd like to thank some people that aren't here today, like my mom, my grandparents, my aunts and uncles, and my cousins, uh, and other friends I've made throughout my life. Uh, you are all supportive and helpful in getting me through to this point, which has taken 15 years, and uh, I finally made it. Uh, I just want to thank my, my parents, my mom, my dad, and my grandparents for helping me get through college and everything else, and then my brothers for getting me into sports and everything else. And then just friends, family, everyone who's helped me throughout this journey through college. I just want to take this time to say thank you to everybody who's helped me on my journey here. Um, not just friends and family, but all the coaches that have been with me the entire time I've been here. You know, really pushing me and, you know, helping me get to that next level. And, uh, yeah, I just want to say thank you a lot. just want to say thank you to uh, my mom and dad. Uh, without your support, there's no way I could be the man I am or be playing football at this wonderful school, which I have done the last four years. Uh, and big thanks to my little brothers, too, uh, Ben and Sam. Uh, without their support and without them looking up to me, uh, I don't know if I could have made it playing football these four years. But thanks to all four of you. I love you all. And thanks for being here today.
podcast on SHN.
I'm hoping that it that it's not that and that it's uh, brown or something. I hear we have to go to Happy Cowboy. Yeah, for sure. Eager to start the second half are both teams here. 30 seconds left in halftime, and we're just going to tee it up and get ready to kick off. Pirates will receive the kick as they deferred to the second half. Blazers lead 21-7 to here. 30 minutes left to play in the football game, and they haven't been kicking it deep all day here as it is Batten sending it to one of the upmen, and taking it is Zach Volo, and Volo finds some space across the 40 to the 45-50 and gets across midfield to the 45 before a few Blazers bring him down inside the 45. And Zach Volo getting things rolling here, knew that it was going to come to him and not to any of the deep receivers. And it was a great play by Volo as he hustled up the right sideline to give the Pirates a big play on special teams to open the half in a little bit of momentum here early to try to uh, cut into this lead. As we mentioned, if it wasn't for that blocked field goal attempt, this score would likely be 14 to 10 instead of 21 to seven. That's right, it was a blocked field goal attempt that was run back for a touchdown that gave the Blazers their 20th point. Pirates trying to cut into that Gilpin in his own, in the Bellhaven territory to start things off with the design quarterback run. Kind of looked like an option actually with French out there and he, Picks up four yards on first down. And that's Demetrius Brockenberry, the defensive lineman, senior out of Shreveport there, making the tackle. Also making sure that Gilpin didn't make that pitch. But a good read by Gilpin to go on ahead and keep that football and pick up four yards on first down. Second and six ball on the Bellhaven 40. Pirates trying to take advantage of some positive yards from the kickoff. Garza goes in motion right to left. Faking the pass to the left side is Gilpin. He thought about throwing it to the right, and now he'll double back to the left side, and then he completes the pass to Ethan Powell. Powell comes down with it around the 25-yard line for the Pirates' first down. Fantastic effort by Ethan Powell. Great concentration to come down with the football and retain possession, but also to get a foot in bounds as he was shoved pretty hard on the sideline as the, uh, the ball was delivered. Well, looks like he might have ended up out of bounds. That's not the case as the clock keeps rolling here. 13.54 left to play in the third quarter. Pirates kind of slowing things down with a huddle. They break it with 15 seconds on the play clock. Two receivers to the left, two receivers to the right. Gilpin will send a man in motion. That's Garza. Gilpin rolls out to the right, looks to that right side, and he's under pressure, decides to tuck it and run, gets across the 25 and picks up two yards to the 24. So solid game there, about three yards on first down on a play where nothing was happening in through the air. And Demetrius Brockenberry again with a tackle for the Blazers there in the middle. If it's not for Brockenberry, Gilpin has a first down on that carry. Brockenberry was the only blazer there in the middle at that moment. Second and eight. Ball in the Bellhaven 24-yard line. Pirates trying to get back into this game quickly. Only two minutes passed here in the third quarter. Garza goes in motion, and he'll double back to the right side. Gilpin looks to pass to him and now flings it deep for Adrian Garza, who tries to lay out for the catch, couldn't quite get underneath it, and falls incomplete. 12.52 up to play in the third is where the clock stops. You have to give credit to number 57, Emmanuel Stanley, the linebacker. He put pressure on Gilpin and forced what was basically a bad pass because Adrian Garza was open. Had Gilpin had more time in the pocket, he could have made a better throw, and that would have likely been a touchdown for the Pirates. Instead, it's third down. Eight yards to the yard to gain. Ball in the 24-yard line. Pirates knocking on the door of the red zone. Garza goes in motion, lines up in the slot on the right side. Anthony Stevens is wide right. Now Biggers goes in motion to that right side. Gilpin. Looks to pass and throws it to the right side. It's completed for the first down and then getting knocked out of bounds. Coming down to that one, Adrian Garza this time makes the catch at the 12. Justin Percy there defensively for the Blazers, forcing the receiver out of bounds. Otherwise, they might have been able to cut that up on the sideline. First and 10, ball on the 12-yard line now. So an opportunity to pick up the first down without getting the touchdown for the Pirates. 
12.30 off to play in the third. Powell and Stevens line up on the left side. Biggers and Robinson on the right side. Biggers goes in motion right to left. And it's a counter play. French gets the give. And then he is brought down by his shoelaces in the backfield. And I think that was a solid stop if I saw that correctly by Connor Fordham. That's correct. Number 16, Connor Fordham out of Wadley High School in Win Wedowie, Alabama. Coming up to make the play and preventing any kind of gain on the play for the Pirates. You just wanted to say Wadoti. Yeah, I did. It might, did I say it right? I don't know, but it's a cool sound in town. Under 12 minutes to play here in the third. Second and 10. Biggers goes in motion. Option and a pitch to French. French gets across the 10, angles to the 5, and is brought down right around there. I think they'll even give him one more yard to the 4 3. He's real close to converting the first down. He's about a half a yard shy of the line to gain. It was a good effort. Great job by Gilpin to wait to make that pitch until the last second. French using his speed to get to the outside, trying to burst his way to the corner. The defense preventing that as well as stopping him just shy of the first down. But third and very short, you got to be satisfied with that as a pirate here. Third and about half a yard here. French in the backfield with Gilpin. Biggers goes in motion. And an option play. Gilpin has to dance around the backfield. He's actually dropped at the five for a loss of a yard. And that brings up fourth down and decision time. This one's a tough one, Chuck. That, that was a great play by the Blazers' defensive line as they were not fooled by the option action to the short side of the field. A couple of those guys stayed home, and when Gilpin turned to go the other way, they were waiting on him and preventing him from getting any yards, in fact, causing him to lose a couple. But it looks like the Pirates, down two scores here, are going to go for it on fourth. Fourth and three. Ball on the five-yard line. Yard to gain is that two-yard line. Gilpin directs traffic, sends man in motion. That's Garza. Pump fakes and looks for a pass. Lobs of the end zone. Garza has a bobble off of his hands incomplete. And that could have been a touchdown there. Garza receiving the pass from Gilpin but not able to secure it. It bounced around a little bit and then fell incomplete. But, you know, the Pirate coaching staff knew that if they didn't convert, that the defense would have the Blazers back against their own goal line, and that's the risk you take. And so the gamble to score did not pay off. You don't, you give up those three points that would have likely occurred had Herps come out. But again, the attempted field goal earlier was a block that resulted in a touchdown. So the coaching staff going for a touchdown there, that's certainly within a reasonable call for that staff in any staff, and so we'll see what the defense can do with the Blazers back against the goal line. That is the one positive to going forward on fourth down from the Bellhaven five, and now Asa Gunla will hand it off. Foley will try to get around right end and fights his way forward for a couple more yards, about to the eight-yard line, and gives Asa Gunla a little bit more breathing room as he went under center there for that first snap, and He's kind of been a little bit of a true multiple formation quarterback as they show him in both looks. And he's done uh, effectively from both types of offense, whether it's the shotgun zone look or this under center. He's played well. Foley is the tailback. He'll get the give, tries to go around right in, breaks through the trenches, and is t brought down at the 15-yard line. I think he has the first down for the Blazers. He does. And it was good blocking on the right side of the offensive line for the Blazers as they were able to open up a big enough hole for him to get through and pick up the line to gain. The Pirates, though, that's just one first down. It was not a big play that, that got the first down. They're, they're forcing the Blazers to move in small plays down the field, at least here at the moment. First and 10 ball on the 15-yard line. Blazers in their own territory. Also, Gunla in the shotgun will bark out orders to those players on the line of scrimmage. And it's a run to the right side for Foley. And it looks like he might have lost the ball for a moment. No, he got it back in. Will be pushed back after gaining a few yards well, short the of the 15. The ball was on the ground, but it, the whistle may have blown before it squirted out. Grant Mitchell there on the stop for the Pirates. Coming out of it with the football was Noah Clarkson, but the referees are going to discuss it at least. And a flag came in from 
That may be what the they're backfield. discussing instead of the fumble. Yeah, we'll see what the flag's about. There's also an injured pirate on the play, so the clock stops at 8.54 to sort all of this out, and we'll take a break on SHN Sports. Bernard Century was the injured pirate, able to come off the field under his own power. And then the penalty flags were offsetting penalties spotted by our backfield judge. And the clock will start back up again. 8.49 left to play in the third quarter. Bellhaven with a second and seven in their, at their own 18. Play action here. Roll out to the right on the bootleg and a pass completed as Asa Gunla, I believe, did get it completed to Brooks Brimer, and Brimer does get the first down for the Blazers, and there was a little question right there yeah, from the Pirates' defense was, if he trapped it. I don't know that that was a completion, although it is ruled one on the field, so obviously in the stat book it'll be a reception as well, but he came out of that reception attempt with the ball was still on the ground, so... Blunt to the left of Oslo Agunla, Foley to his right, and flags come in here before the snap, and usually that's on the offense. It's generally going to be a false start if they stop the play pre-snap, and it is. 8.03 left to play in the third quarter, and that backs the Blazers up five yards. On a drive that started at their own five because of a turnover on downs from the Pirates. So they have... 95 yards to go on this drive should they score a touchdown. Clock still moving here. 7.49 left to play in the third. Back in the shotgun, Asa Gunla. Zone read gives to Foley, and Foley is hitting the backfield and drags a defender as he crosses the trenches and gets to the 27-yard line and brings up third down. That's Edmundo Suarez, the defensive end, getting a hold of the running back and pulling him down before he got back to the original line of scrimmage where this series started. About a yard shy of that line, which is the 28. It should be third down. Oh, I guess they didn't adjust the box after the offsetting penalty, so that makes sense now. Second and 11 ball on the 27-yard line. It'll be a designed run for Asa Gunla, but he is immediately hitting the backfield. And while letting that play develop, he allowed the Pirates to get through the trenches. Well, and, and Jalen Garcia yeah, was there in the backfield to make the play. I think it was 82. Yeah, it looked like 82 to me. His jersey scrunched up, but it was Jalen Garcia. who It might well, be 92, actually. That, that makes more sense yeah, as Malik, Malik McDonald. McDonald. Yeah. yeah. You don't usually put your wide receivers nope. at defensive end, <laughs> although some wide receivers are big enough to play defensive end. Ethan Powell could probably play defensive end. 6.20 left to play here in the third quarter, and it's a big third down. Asa Gunla will be sacked from behind. Great effort by number 33 on the edge, Edmundo Suarez. He's having a heck of a ball game today from that defensive end spot. He got off quickly on the line of scrimmage, beat his blocker, and had an open pathway to Asa Gunla's back. And he saw him at the last second, and otherwise that might have been a fumble on contact if Asa Gunla didn't see him. 
to tuck the ball away. So Adrian Garza will get an attempt at a return here. Norton will punt this one away from right around where Bellhaven picked up the ball at the five-yard line. It's a low snap, and he's able to get it off. Garza will take it at the 45 in Pirate territory. He didn't call for the fair catch, but doesn't go anywhere with it. Then a flag comes in. Let's see what this is about. It may be a kick-catch interference penalty. I'm not sure because it looked like he had enough time. Tackle made by Lawrence Tyler, number zero for Bellhaven. Now, the official's going to talk this one over. Yeah, I think the initial thought with the flag was likely kick, kick catch interference, but there was enough time for Garza to make that catch, so they may wave this off. Let's see, unless it's another call. It's going to be a block. And call. Yeah, it looks like it'll go against the Pirates. Block mm -hmm. in the back. There was no time to return it. Where was the block in the back? <laughs> it must have occurred near where the, the kick was fielded otherwise. Uh, they likely wouldn't have thrown the flag. There were a lot of bodies there in that area, but as I mentioned, Garza had plenty of time and, and space to make that catch, which he did cleanly. First and 10, ball at the 35-yard line for the Pirates who are trying to cut into this 21-7 lead for the Blazers. 5:27 left to play in the third. Biggers goes in motion. Uh, option play, French gets it on the pitch, gets across the 35 to the 40, and I think he'll be... Brought down out of bounds after a solid pickup of five yards. De La Rosa did a good job of getting out there on the defender. He just couldn't quite set an edge there to let French get outside of him. Otherwise, that probably would have gone for at least 10, if not 12, 15 yards. 5.15 left to play in the third as the clock ticks here. They didn't stop the clock for the Pirates who want to try and make this comeback down two touchdowns. Volo in the backfield with Gilpin. Two receivers on both sides from the right hash mark. Biggers goes in motion from the right side. Play action here for Gilpin. He's under pressure. Decides to tuck it around. Around the left end. Gets across the 40 and is just shy of the yard to gain. It'll be third and one from the 44 for the Pirates. And, man, Gilpin, I know you don't want your quarterback to sacrifice his body, but... He definitely probably could have taken a lick and then maybe picked up the first down. Well, I don't think he saw the, the tackler, Rock Skinedry, number 58, come around the edge because when he came into the open, he turned to the move that direction. The Skinedry was right there to swallow him up. Third and one from the 44. Corners come into press a little bit here. Garza goes in motion left to right, an option here, and Gilpin picks up the first down a little bit more across the 45, just shy of the midfield line as he gets it to the 48, but it does move the chains for Southwestern, and new yards, new downs come in for the Pirates. Well, Gilpin weighs 170 pounds, which is not a little bitty person, but he got very skinny there and squirted through the line of scrimmage to pick up three yards and, and easily make that first down. He saw a little hole, and he turned sideways and squirted right through it. First and 10 ball on the 48-yard line. Two receivers on both sides from the left hash mark. Gilpin will line up Joey Robinson as a tight end, and now Garza goes in motion right to left. A low snap taken by Gilpin. He thought about rolling out to the right. Now he'll have to as he's under pressure, and then escapes back to the left side, completes a pass to Garza at the yard to gain. I believe they'll give it to him. If not, he's just a little bit short. But, man, Landry Gilpin had to come up with a plan B and C on that play and still picked up nine yards. Well, and that's where the legs really pay off of, of Landry Gilpin there in the pocket. He can make up for a little bit of a breakdown in the offensive line protection and extend plays, and he's always looking downfield while he's also looking to see if he needs to take off and uh, pick up the yardage with his legs. Three minutes straight up to play in the third. Second and one here. Ball on the 43-yard line in Bellhaven territory. The Pirates trying to pick up the first down option play. A toss to French. French gets across the 40 to the 35. Stays on his feet to the 30. Picks up the first down and a good chunk more for the Pirates to the 28-yard line. Risky pitch by Gilpin, but he saw that French was alone. He pitched it over the defender that was coming in to make the tackle on Gilpin himself. 
and he got it over the defender's head right to French in open space, and French took full advantage down the right sideline. The crazy thing about the option is all it takes is a fingertip to change that football's trajectory and be a fumble, but instead the Pirates come away with a big first down thanks to the finesse pass from Landry Gilpin. New set of downs here at the Bellhaven 28. First and 10 for Southwestern and a counter will be a give to French and French gets across the 25 to about the 23 yard line and Brady French he's always been involved in the offense sometimes he gets touches sometimes he doesn't but today he's having a good game and he did a great job of following his blocking there especially on the left side and as it developed back to the right he cut back that way and picked up a couple of extra yards called again a five on first down Second and five from the 23. Pirates trying to come away with at least six points on this drive. Gilpin sends Biggers in motion out of the slot right into the left side. Gilpin drops back, throws a dart across the middle, and Ethan Powell had to kind of juggle it, couldn't come down to the catch, and it stops the clock at 124 left in the third, brings up third down. That pass was just a little behind Powell. He had to kind of twist his body to try to get his hands on it. And he did get his hands on the football, but T.J. Hersey, the defensive back, was right behind him and able to stick his paw in there and, and knock it loose, make it difficult for Powell to bring in. I'd like to see the Pirates finish this drive here with a touchdown in the third quarter. Minute 24 left to play in said third quarter. Trips left, single receiver to the right is Anthony Stevens. Biggers goes in motion left to right, and Gilpin will take the snap. Third and five is under pressure, able to get it off to a safety valve. That's Brady French, and French gets back to about the line of scrimmage, might have crawled his way to another yard there. Brings up fourth down, and, you know, I almost wonder, Chuck, do you take the points here and make it 21-10, or do you go for it here and try and get in the end zone or get a new set of downs, if nothing else? It's a very difficult call because this is the area of the field that the kick was blocked in the first half that resulted in a touchdown and a 10-point swing for the Bellhaven Blazers. And it looks like Coach Austin and his staff are, are more concerned with that first down and keeping this drive alive, maybe a touchdown at the end of it. Fourth and three from the 21. Gianni Tasigui will get the handoff and goes around left and gets to the he's 20. And he fights forward for it. Then he's pushed back. Forward progress will mark that short of the yard to it gain. It is short. And it will turn the ball over to the Blazers. So two offensive drives this quarter and two turnovers on downs as the Pirates sense the urgency to go for that touchdown but just couldn't quite get it. They need a ball to break their way somewhere to, to kind of push that momentum. This has been a very even football game in every facet except for the score. And, and I'd give a nod in the special teams to Bellhaven because of the block kick return for a touchdown. Also, Gunlaw under center. A toss to Foley. Foley dances around one defender, then he's hit by Ben Brockman before a couple Pirates team up for the tackle and a gain of five to Brady Foley. Jay Hanna there, the defensive end, cleaning it up after the gain by Foley. And it was a nice gain on first down. The Pirates are going to have to come up with a better stance on first down than that to stop this Bellhaven drive from progressing. And I think that'll be the final play of the third quarter. Doesn't look like the Blazers are interested in getting another snap off as they head towards the sideline. The clock will expire on the game clock side of things. And we go into the fourth quarter with the same score that we entered the third quarter with. 21-7. to Bellhaven Blazers over the Southwestern Pirates here on SHN Sports. I'm Carl Schoening along with Chuck Crazy, Michael Francis, our producer, Julian and Mickey, our camera operators. And this is the final regular season game for the Southwestern Pirates as the next game will be the playoff game where... Uh, the seeding works to where one will play one for essentially what will be the conference championship. Two will play two for third place. And, you know, three and four just get playoff games for an extra game. And uh, in this particular case, we're looking at a away game no matter what. Uh, but we'll have to see how, how it goes as the 
you never know how things can change in this kind of uh, COVID year, if you yeah. will. You, you can't even trust the rules that are set forth at the beginning of the season because they can be affected by a number of outside factors that surround and, and generally emanate from the COVID issue. Players are, are, are set down because they – have been in contact with someone who tests positive for COVID. So they have to quarantine for 14 days. And so you can't even trust that you're going to have your full starting lineup at week in and week out. Second and four ball on the 26 yard line for the Blazers. They're in their own territory as we start the fourth quarter. And it'll be a give to Foley, and he tries to spin forward. Gets a couple yards on that spin move before he is brought down by Bernard Century. Good to see him back in the game. Yeah, he definitely shook off whatever ailed him earlier. He's back out making contact, pretty good contact. Also there, Patrick Nichols, Nicholas on the stop. Third and about a yard and a half here. Big play here if they can get a stop. It would be big as it would force a punt. Asagunla under center. Gives to Foley. Actually, it's a play action. Bootleg to the right side. And Asagunla will angle for the first down and get it around the 33-yard line. They might even give him the 34 as he fooled everybody on that play. Just a naked bootleg here to the wide side. Bernard Century there to force the quarterback out of bounds, but not before he got the line to gain to keep this drive alive for the Bellhaven Blazers. New set of downs for the Blazers as they're more interested in burning clock here with a two-touchdown lead. 4.01 left to play in the fourth quarter. They break the huddle with 12 seconds on the play clock. And I think Asagunla is in no hurry to let it play under 10. And, geez, it's at five seconds now as he gets ready to take the snap. It's a toss here and a run play for Foley. Flag flies in from the white hat in the backfield. Usually that's in the area of a chop block. Yeah, Century was able to cut the running back down, but there it was some kind of flag in that same area. We'll see what the call is. I should say I thought I saw a chop block. It might be a hold. We'll see what the call is here, but this looks to me to be against the Blazers, and I think they know it as well. There's going to be a hold, which is a big difference, but that's a five-yard difference in the penalty. And I believe you – you, it will remain the same down regardless of the call. Yeah, we'll go ahead and repeat first down here. So the ball moved back to the 25-yard line. Yard to gain is the 44. So I guess that's a, a spot foul, obviously, right there. So the mm -hmm. hold must have been a, a yard behind the line of scrimmage. Also Gunla watching the blitz being shown by Brockman. Quick pass over to the right side. It's completed to Batten, and then Batten will fight forward for a couple more yards as Jules Williams pushes him towards out of bounds and gain a five on the quick out route. You know, we haven't heard a lot of the name Jules Williams today, but when you're a cornerback, that's usually a good thing because that means – they're not going to your side of the field, and we haven't seen any passes that I can recall that were thrown to a receiver guarded by Williams until just now. Well, you know, he actually came in in that UMHB game and played so well that he's really earned a lot of playing time here throughout the rest of the season. Here we are in game four. Second and 14, ball in the 30. Also gun on the shotgun. Zone read gives it to Foley. Foley powers his way through the left side and only picks up a yard. It looks like he got a little, looked like he got a bit more of a push, but only gets back to that initial line of scrimmage. He does get a bit more of a push. It was again a six as he gets past the original line of scrimmage. Yeah, Patrick Nicholas there making the stop for the Pirates, number 28, forcing a third and long here. This is the opportunity here with there's still plenty of football to be played with over 12 minutes. The Pirates need a stop here on third down to get the football back. Third and nine, ball on the 35-yard line. Bellhaven in their own territory. They've been working this clock low on every play clock. It's been around five seconds when he gets the snap here under five seconds as Asa Gunlow will drop back for a pass, and it's a quarterback draw, and he is hit by a couple 
Pirates. I think Bernard Century and Ben Brockman teamed up on that tackle. Yeah, Century made sure that he stopped any forward progress of the big quarterback, Asa Gunla, and forced a fourth down as it's now fourth and four. Going back to receive this punt is going to be Adrian Garza. We'll see if he can get a nice return to set up the Pirates here offensively in the fourth quarter. Down two scores with 11 and a half minutes and counting. And for the record, I've been really impressed by Asa Gunla. We haven't said his first name because we have differing first names here, Mayola or Mario. And if it's Mario, uh, I'm going to guess there must be a typo or autocorrect yeah, or something. I think Mayola is more accurate. Here's the punt coming from Norton. And trying to look for some space here is Adrian Garza. And Garza only gets a couple yards across the 30. Yeah, good coverage downfield by number 27 of Bellhaven, who's not on our roster. But good effort. <laughs> and you heard, might have just heard the PA announcer say tackle by number 27. And, yeah, that's uh, we'll have to figure those out one day here, Chuck. Well, and typically that's a, a, a freshman who happens to get suited up for a travel team that doesn't expect to get in the game and maybe somebody got nicked up and they said get out there and cover. And he took advantage. He's certainly not on the roster, at least not as number 27. Yeah, or a ripped jersey or something along Could those be. lines. Here it is, first and ten for the Pirates. They need to start the comeback now. Neither team has scored here in the second half. It's a double – it's a – excuse me, it's a end around sweep and getting across the 40 to the 50, the 45 in Bellhaven territory and picking up a lot of yards for the Pirates is Zach Volo. And Volo got a nice block from Dawson Gonzalez to add another seven or eight yards to the end of that run. The Pirates faked a double reverse, and uh, the running back kept it going the other way. And again, like I said, nice block by Gonzalez. He got a nice lick on the Bellhaven defender out there in space. He faked me out with that double reverse, too. I was ready to call it the other way. You hear the defense yelling out double, but Volo – Knew that if he just faked that handoff, he would lose a couple eyes of the defenders and took advantage of it getting into Bellhaven's territory at the 40-yard line. First and 10 for the Pirates on a new set of downs. Two receivers on both sides. Right hash mark. Gilpin will send a man in motion. That's Anthony Stevens. Gilpin has time to throw. Slings it deep down the left sideline. And Tasigui could not come down with the catch. And then there defensively, Corey Tolliver just made sure that that wasn't going to go into the end zone for a fake touchdown, I guess. Uh, didn't see that the catch was incomplete. That would have been an incredible catch by Segue. It was a back shoulder throw, and it was over the top. So he, he couldn't see the football until it came across his field of vision, and that would have been next to impossible to adjust. The and he was unable to bring it down. Yeah, the incompletion stops the clock at 10.22 left to play here in the fourth. Garza goes in motion, and Garza will get the handoff. He'll pass it back to Gilpin, and Gilpin evades one tackle, and then he'll just take the loss of a couple yards to the 42 as I think that that was a play we saw last week or something similar there on uh, Southwestern's part against Louisiana College, and watching their film was the – Blazers as they were not uh, losing Gilpin on the on the pass there. No, Isaiah Blackman realized what was going on and came running downhill from the linebacker position to cover Gilpin. And after Gilpin caught it, he had to deal with him. Could not get much momentum going. Third and 12. Garza goes in motion from the left side. Gilpin will drop back. Passes it to the left side and bobbling it incomplete intended for Mason Biggers. And that brings up fourth down, 9.55 left to play here in the fourth. And the punting unit will come out here to try and pin Bel Bellhaven deep. Well, and you have to put it back on your defense here, fourth and 12. That's too much to try to convert here near midfield. You want to rely on the leg of Erbst and hope your defense can get a quick three and out against the Blazers. Michael Simpson back deep to receive this punt from Erbst who has been the special teams player of the week all three weeks for the Pirates. Puts his left foot into it and angles it out. Maybe could have gone a little bit deeper. Let's see where they finally find it. I think it's around the 20. That's one way to ensure that Simpson's not going to have a big return, and it is going to be marked at the 23-yard line. So it's only a 19-yard punt. And that's where Bellhaven will take over. And so far, Bellhaven has not really seemed so interested in 
scoring a touchdown, going for the big plays as much as they are in burning the clock. Both teams have all three timeouts left as Bellhaven will take over with 9.52 left to play in the fourth quarter. And they'll take their time again with the play clock, winding it down as far as possible before they snap. Even though the clock stopped here at 9.52, they do wait till under 10 as Asa Gunlo will toss it to Kobe Blunt. And Blunt was trying to beat Ludeman. Ludeman will bring him down from behind, but not before Kobe Blunt picks up about eight yards on first down. You know, as long as it doesn't affect your execution of the play, it's okay to take as much of that play clock as possible. But some teams get in a rhythm and they rely on, on getting up to the line of scrimmage quickly and snapping the ball. That doesn't appear to be the case with Bellhaven. They huddle a lot, almost every play, and they're very patient. And that's something you see in more traditional under center eye formation teams, even though they kind of flip back to a more spread look. Asa Gunla will remain under center here. Play clock down to two seconds as Asa Gunla tosses it to the right side, and Blunt will get the first down at the 38-yard line. That's Patrick Nicholas coming up to make the tackle from the safety position, but not before the first down is gained by the Blazers. The Pirates are going to need to come up with a stop here quickly as we wind down to nine minutes and counting remaining in this ball game. You know, I hate to keep harping on it, but it could be a 14-10 score, but the Pirates find themselves down two touchdowns, which is a, a much more difficult task to come back from than a simple four-point lead first and 10 ball on the 38 yard line Bellhaven in their own territory 837 left to play here as the play clock's down to one second and also Gunlow will give it again and in the backfield Blunt is brought down and big old 94 up front making the tackle that's Jason, Jason Lund yeah, and, and Jules Williams was there as well to affect the running back and, and force him to make a move that allowed Lund to come up from behind and swallow him up That's where Williams has really impressed me is his run support this season. It does come into play here as it puts Bellhaven behind the initial line of scrimmage. Second and 13 coming up here in a moment. And Asa Gunla will probably use a timeout here as the huddle hasn't broken with three seconds on the play clock. So the first timeout of the second half will be taken by Bellhaven now. And they tried to use, you know, obviously they used as much game clock as they could before they burned that time out. The Pirates are, you know, as this game wanes on, they're finding themselves further and further in a hole, not by giving up more and more points, but by having less and less time to try to convert what is necessary offensively to make up the difference on the scoreboard. 7.49 left to play here in the fourth quarter. Blazers with a 21-7 lead. And, you know, uh, we have not seen one yet today from the Pirates, but they could really use a turnover. That's something that the Pirate defense has, has produced a lot of over the years, but even this year as well. We, and you're right, we haven't seen that in today's ball game, whether it's a forced fumble or an interception. That kind of momentum can make the difference late in a ball game like this. We'll see what the defense can do. Maybe maybe the instruction from the coaching staff for the defense is start ripping at that football, guys. Second and 13 out of the timeout. Bellhaven at their own 35-yard line. Time out a little bit more extended here as the Southwestern coaches have to leave the field. And now I believe the play clock is wound. So Asa Gunlow will step back into the shotgun. He has Foley to his right. And it'll be a quick pass over to the right side. It's completed at the 40. And... Throwing him out of bounds was Jules Williams as the pass was completed to... Number 14, who's not on yeah, the roster. I was about to say, I don't remember 14 making a catch here today. Unless he changed the numbers, he's not on the roster. Another one of those uh, unrostered numbers 
on Bellhaven. Nice job by Jules Williams to make sure that no more than what was gained from the completion was added after that completion, forcing the receiver out of bounds. And again, Williams playing very well for the Pirates. Big third down here. Third and four, seven, 16 left to play in the fourth quarter under center. Asagunla. And he'll give it to Foley. Foley hitting the backfield. He's going to be brought down for a big loss as a slew of Pirates push him back behind the 40-yard line, and they'll mark the forward progress at the 41. The Pirate defense brought everyone, including Jules Williams, from the backside. He had no one to block him. The running back had nowhere to go. Foley took the handoff, looked around, and saw six Pirates staring him down. Tried to spin his way out of it, but to no avail. Eli Norris goes back deep to receive this punt. Andrew Norton will kick it away in front of his own 25-yard line. 628 left to play in the fourth as the clock hits play clock hits zero as the snap comes to Norton and Norris will call for a fair catch at around the 25-yard line. Nice wise play by Norris there to make sure that the ball didn't hit the ground and roll closer to the goal line. Decent enough field position here for the Pirates to start this drive, but they really need to take advantage of having the football here. There's only 6.20 on the clock. They don't need this drive to be too time-consuming, but they do have a little ways to go. 71 yards to pay dirt here. 6.20 left to play in the fourth, as you mentioned. All three timeouts left for the Pirates. Two timeouts left for the Blazers. Gilpin has an empty backfield at the moment. Two receivers to the left and two to the right. Biggers goes in motion. Gilpin will drop back. Scans to the left, throws to the left side, and the catch is caught by Volo. That was a great effort by, by Volo in the flat there. He picks up a first down. He ran the route about 14 yards and, and did a bit of a curl and came back to the football, but still, when the reception was made, had plenty of, of yardage to pick up that first down. Unfor Keep yeah, unfortunately, he does not get out of bounds, so the clock keeps moving here. 6.02 left to play in the fourth quarter. First and 10 ball on the 40-yard line. Pirates in their own territory. They're going to need to score and then probably try an onside kick as Biggers goes in motion. It'll be a pass for Gilpin. He's hit as he throws, and it's intercepted. Coming down with the catch is Philip Naylor. Well, and Naylor came all the way from the opposite side of the field, the other safety position. Gilpin had Powell, who had a step on his defender, but Naylor cut in front of that pass and picked it off. That's, that's going to hurt the Pirates here late. They're going to need a turnover probably for sure here in the waning minutes to try to give them the type of momentum that they're going to need to get over this two-touchdown hump. 5.45 left to play in the fourth, and, yeah, just a tough break there. Gilpin obviously forced to throw it deep here as the Pirates need an explosive play, and instead it's and a he turnover. he it there, but Naylor, Naylor just wisely adjusted from his position across the field and came across the route right in front of the pass to pick it off. Play clock at 10 seconds here. Also, Gunla takes the snap under center and tosses it to Foley. Foley spins away from one would-be tackler, gets it across the 35, and will take it to the 37-yard line for a gain of about four on first down. Yeah, that was Easton Failer coming up to make the stop for the Pirates. He cut down the running back, Foley, as he crossed the line of scrimmage, picked up about four yards. And Ben Brockman... Had something to adjust on his hand real quick and looked like he was ready to go, but for a moment, get out. He was, looked like he was going to be taken out of the game, but he just needed something quickly done on his hand. I'm curious about what that was here with 5.09 left to play in the fourth quarter. Also, Gunla trying to direct traffic, his fullback over to the left side. Foley will get the handoff. And he'll bounce outside and get the first down and more down the left sideline. He crosses midfield, gets to the 45-yard line, and we'll see where he was out of bounds as that'll stop the clock to move the chains. And I think because he went out of bounds at 4.54, left to play in the fourth, and he went out of bounds 
further back than I thought he did at the Pirates' 44-yard line. That was a very effective use of the wide side of the field for the Blazer offense as they were able to set the edge out there and get the running back Foley outside for a nice game into Pirate territory. Also gun under center. The cock stopped at, or did pick back up, I beg your pardon, 426 here. And another handoff to Foley, and Foley is hit in the backfield and brought down Eli Norris getting there to make the tackle for loss. Not fooled by that play. Most of the motion coming back to this near side, and Norris stayed home and made a nice play for the Pirates for a loss. There's going to be a timeout. I believe this is the Pirates' timeout. That'll stop the clock at 421 left to play in the fourth. Did you happen to see who – they didn't signal who called the timeout, I, so I would I assume it's Pirates. See, um, in this situation and the way that the Blazers have been burning as much of the play clock as – as much of the game clock as possible by running the play clock down, it had to have been the Pirates calling timeout here. We're down to four minutes and 21 seconds here remaining. The Pirates are down two scores and don't possess the ball. So a big couple of plays here for this defense to try to get the football back for the offense. You know, I wouldn't mind seeing a, a, a big turnover or something like that, but we'll see. Maybe a sack here. But it seems the Blazers are pretty content with running the football at this point. Neither team scoring here in the second half so far. Asagunla will go under center. He has Foley as the tailback. Single receivers wide on both sides. Faking the toss to Foley. Asagunla will roll out to the right. Completes the pass at the 40-yard line. Getting a little bit further is Jordan Cox, the freshman wide receiver. Short of the first down, and I think the Pirates will use their last time out here. Just as soon as I say they're content with running the football, they run a naked bootleg pass for a nice gain. Uh, Pirates fortunately stopped them short of the line to gain, but third and two yards, that's easily manageable for this Blazer offense. So the Pirates are going to have to come up with a big play here and get a stop and force a fourth down decision by the Bellhaven Blazers with 414 remaining. Definitely a tough call here, but just to play devil's advocate for you, Chuck, if you can put yourself in the shoes of head coach of the Blazers, Blaine McCorkle, if the Pirates do get a stop here on third and short and bring up fourth and short, do you go for it on fourth and short and try and put the nail in the coffin? It depends on what happens on third down. If, if there's no gain or minimal gain and – fourth down rolls around I would go for it if I'm Bellhaven but if they get a loss on this play of any significance three five yards I'd likely punt it 414 off to play in the fourth 21-7 Blazers over the Pirates also Gunwa with a hard count trying to pull the Pirates off now we'll send a man in motion Again, Asagunla will bark out a hard count with five seconds on the play clock. He takes the snap, give to Foley. Foley finds a gap on the right side, and then he's hit as he crosses the 30-yard line but does pick up the first down, and the tackle made by Patrick Nicholas, not enough. And Well, the Blazers took advantage of the weak side of the formation to pick up that first down. All the wide side of the field near the Bellhaven side and the formation was heavy that way. But they handed off on the backside of the formation behind that right tackle and picked up a good six yards for a first down. And the Pirates, they got to figure something out here with four minutes and nine seconds to get this Bellhaven offense stopped. Southwestern uses their last timeout. So that timeout, two timeouts ago, I guess must have been the Blazers' timeout because the Pirates had since used another timeout. So... Well, they could have been real close to the play clock the way they've been toying That's with true. it, and we just missed that on that particular play. And, again, the referees did not signal, so and the assumption had to be made that it was likely Southwestern, but doesn't appear so 
unless they've given us a bonus timeout. Yeah, it does look like the Pirates perhaps use the fourth timeout here. <laughs> and it'll be first and 10 ball in the 29-yard line, Bellhaven in southwestern territory. 21-7, Blazers with the lead. They're not really interested in adding on to it so much as they are burning as much clock as possible. Also, Gunla. Surveys the defense as he takes the snap, and he pitches it out. Foley will spin away from some pressure before he's brought down from behind by Suarez and picks up seven yards on first down. If Suarez isn't trailing that play, Foley is running for a touchdown at the end of that play because he had open field on that side, and the defenders in front of him had either fallen down or been blocked. And so it was a great play in pursuit by number 33, Edmundo Suarez, to make sure that not more was gained by Foley on that play. And, and like I said, it, it potentially could have even been a touchdown-saving tackle. Clock moving here at 3.30 left to play in the fourth. Play clock is at five seconds here as Asa Gunwell is under center. The offset eye. Toss to Foley. Foley looking for a gap around left end. Gets the first down, I believe. They're doing an effective job of using both sides of the formation, and they're using their run game primarily to move the ball down the field against the Pirate defense and burning plenty of game clock along the way. Also, Gummo is just an old-school quarterback running this old-school offense, and it doesn't seem to me like they're going for the explosive plays. They're looking for the small forward progressions that result in a common first down. It's They're taking what the Pirate defense will give them, and they're not trying to get any more than that with this two-touchdown lead, and it's actually paying off as a strategy here late. Four seconds on the play clock, 2.42 left to play on the game clock, and Foley will get the pitch from Asa Gunla, and on first down again, he picks up about seven yards. And Ludeman is saying that the ball came loose and the Pirates got it. The officials are looking forward to see who comes up with it at the bottom of the pile, but I think they blew the play dead before the ball came loose. They had definitely blown the play dead. That was Elijah Norris coming out with the football for the Pirates, but play dead so it did not matter but it's that kind of aggressiveness the pirates need to be employing here late to try to get their hands on the football one to stop this bellhaven drive but ultimately they need the football to get the points they need in this last couple of minutes i've seen teams come back from two scores in two minutes but you do need a little bit of a break in the bellhaven Blazers are not going to do anything to give you any favors here late. Second and four, ball on the 13-yard line. A minute 47 left to play in the fourth quarter. Five seconds on the play clock as Asa Gunla settles under center. A toss here to Foley. Foley tries to go around right in, and Ludeman gets him at the ankle. And the ball was him. on the ground again, and it looked like Ludeman punched it out when he made the tackle, and we have a late whistle, and it is Pirate football. Well, if there's ever a miracle, it's the Pirates getting it back with a minute 31, and if you have a big explosive play that's a near-guaranteed touchdown, this final game of the regular season is the time to use it when you're down two scores. Then you got to try for the onside kick, so instead of a first down and you know perhaps a victory formation for the Blazers Pirates have new life breathed into them and you want to try to do it as quickly as you can after the turnover if you can turn the field over quickly with a deep pass then you'll do that like you said if there's a play you have that you've been hanging on to this is the time to call it Gilpin in the shotgun first and 10 from his own 13 He'll pass, rolls out to the right as he's under pressure, looks down the field and slings it and throws it away. So it is now going to be second down, minute 25. So he didn't burn a whole lot of time on that play, but you, know, you want to try to get a big play immediately after the turnover to try to turn that momentum and, and churn it into more. We'll see what happens here on second and 10. Gilpin has two receivers on both sides. From the middle of the field, minute 25 left to play in the fourth. Gilpin will throw at the last second and a little bit low for Mason Biggers, incomplete. Hit him on the hip. He wasn't quite ready for it. It was the backside hip as well, so he couldn't quite turn around to make a, a play on the football, and it's now third down. 
That oh. stops the clock at a minute 21 left to play in the fourth. Trips right, single receiver to the left. Gilpin, a two-step drop. We'll throw it over to the left side. Biggers makes the catch this time for the first down, and the Pirates will have to move quickly as he didn't get out of bounds, and the clock stops at a minute 12 to move the chains. It was a great effort by Biggers. He had to twist his body around on the backside again. That time he made the catch. Well, the clock stops back up again, and this now will be killed on a spike here by Gilpin, and that stops the clock at a minute seven left to play in the fourth. Second and ten. Pirates at their own 38-yard line. It will likely be just a brief timeout here as the Pirates only call the timeout. To, well, it wasn't even a timeout. They just spiked the ball, so never mind. <laughs> no timeouts left for the Pirates. Two right. for the Blazers. Not that they're probably going to use them unless they need to. Stop some momentum from the Pirates. Trips right, single receiver to the left. Gilpin on second and ten. Zone read as Tasigui clears out of the backfield. And Gilpin will step up and fire. It's completed to Anthony Stevens at the 40, and he rolls forward to about the 38-yard line. See where they officially mark him down. They'll make it that 38-yard line. The clock stops, move the chains at 58 seconds. They actually wind it again. Pirates are going to have to kill the clock or go for it here. Play action as Tasigui clears out of the backfield again. Gilpin rolls out to the right. Finds Ethan Powell for the first down, and that should stop the clock at 43 seconds left to play here in the fourth as the ball advances to the Bellhaven 23-yard line. Pirates moving it down quickly. They don't stop the clock that time between the... First downs as it's a play action here for Gilp, and he has time to throw to Sigui out of the backfield. Will go on out of bounds after he completes the catch, and they only give him about a yard on the play. Well, that's okay because getting out of bounds was the key there and stopping the clock with a half a minute. 30 seconds in the ball game. Pirates trying to put up two touchdowns in this time span. It's possible. They're down within range of getting a real quick completion and then all you need is an onside and then you have an opportunity. It's not easy, but it can be done. We've seen it happen. Again, neither team scoring in the second half here. Look for a fade to Powell here in the corner of the end zone. Gilpin will drop back, fires it to the left side, and Powell unable to get the catch to come down as Faison Locke was there in defense. More of a, a bullet pass from Gilpin than you would have liked to have seen if you're Ethan Powell. You want him to float it up there and give you an opportunity to climb the ladder, use your height to come down with that football. We'll see if they try again. Yeah, that's 6-5 going again against 5-11. Third and nine, clock stopped at 24 seconds left in the fourth. Gilpin will roll out to the left. Looking for somebody in the end zone. He's going to decide to tuck it and run, and he'll sidestep out of bounds after picking up the first down, I believe. He does so, and 16 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Running, running out of clock here, but you got to get a touchdown quickly. This player the next to even have an opportunity for an onside. Gilpin gets the instructions from the sideline and lines up the Pirate offense. First and 12. Trips right, single receiver to the left is Ethan Powell. Gilpin will drop back. Throws across the middle. Intended for Powell. It's broken up by Locke. Incomplete. That was good defense there by Locke, and there's only 11 seconds on that clock. So still enough time that the Pirates can, if they can score on this play, get an opportunity for an onside. Now, will there be much time beyond that to get a play on? We'll see. But they have to convert here first. We're probably down to our final three plays of the ball game. They're trying to get it to Powell. Use his height. Look for a slant here, maybe to Anthony Stevens. Second and ten. Gilpin under pressure, and he loses the ball. It almost gets intercepted, but it hits the turf before it is taken by Braden Sparks. Gilpin tried to turn to find 
a little bit of space and extend the play, but there was just another defender there from the Bellhaven Blazers, and he did all he could to get rid of the ball without losing yardage. That was Cooper Martin there haunting him. Five seconds left in the ball game, and two touchdowns in five seconds seems it's to be impossible. Tall order. Yeah, so, but Gilpin will still try and get at least one as he comes out with Dawson Gonzalez to his left, three receivers to the right, and Ethan Powell on the left side, and Gilpin has the time expire on him as he lets this one fly to the end zone. Mason Biggers can't come down with the touchdown. And he had it for a second, too. That's how the ball game comes to a close. Well, had that been completed, you know, you, you, you might be a little upset because of the block kick being the difference in the game. And really, the Pirates aren't so desperate if that block kick doesn't happen there in the first. And give credit to the Bellhaven Blazers in the three phases of the game. I, I'm going to say it was pretty even offensively on both sides of the ball, pretty even defensively. And while Herps did his job as he typically does, you've got to give credit to the Bellhaven Blazers special teams because they really came up with the big play in the first half that really made the difference in today's ball game. Well, your final score here from Berkelbach Field. The Pirates fall to the Blazers 21-7. to We'll be back with a post-game interview with Joe Austin when he makes his way up here. And until then, just stick with us here on SHN Sports. Thank you guys for tuning in to the game and stick around for the post-game as we'll give you analysis and a conversation with Joe Austin.
we uh, in frame? Well, the Pirates fall to Bellhaven 21-7 to here as Southwestern completes their regular season. I'm Carl Schoening, joined by Joe Austin. And, Coach, uh, just your overall thoughts on the ballgame. Uh, man, another four-quarter hard loss. Defense did really, really well. Gave up 14 points the whole game. And they were early, so they really dug in and did a fantastic job. Um, things really hinged a lot on that second quarter goal line possession where we scored a touchdown, they called it back, and then they blocked our field goal and ran it back. And that was you know, a 14 point swing. Not that there weren't other opportunities, but that was a, a key moment in the game. Offensively, we had lots of opportunities that we didn't cash in on. So I could tell our guys every week, we're in our division, which is the tougher of the two divisions in my opinion, we're right there with four of the teams. We just came out on the short end uh, in, in three of those games. Three games we had the opportunity to win, and then we didn't. I'm really proud with how hard we fought. Our guys didn't give up. We were even at the end, you know, we got the ball back. Our defense got the ball back. We moved it down. We didn't score. Had a chance to score again. But, uh, you know, they hung in. It's been a, a tough season, but we'll fight again next week. I can guarantee you that. Yeah, defensive battle on both sides. Neither team scoring in the second half. Uh, what, what was it that made this such a defensive game? Well, their defensive line is really good. Um, and they have good athletes in the secondary, and they play a ton of man coverage. And uh, so they're, they're hard to score. I, know he did a, I think we did a really good job of getting a position to score. We just didn't take advantage of it. And our defense, you know, kind of bent a little bit, gave up some yards, but then we found ways to stop them. And so I thought it was two good defensive games. I think the defense has carried the day over the offenses. Well, Coach, looking forward to the next game next week. Do you have any information on that? Uh, not, well, I haven't seen all the scores, but uh, if Saul Ross is playing Harden Simmons, I'm going to guess, no offense to Saul Ross, that Harden Simmons probably won that one. Do you guys know? No, we can double-check that. Any out-of-town scoreboard? Um, so assuming that Saul Ross lost, we would be traveling to play at Saul Ross. Uh, I think that may be locked in. So I think, I think that's probably what we're going to do. But there'll be a press release uh, in just a few hours from our conference once all, once all the games are completed. But I would be say with probably 90-something percent certainty that we'll be heading out to Alpine next Saturday. Well, we can check right now live scores thanks to the power of the Internet as you would think that it would pop up here under schedule and results as it takes a moment for us. Yeah, folks at home are probably beating us to it. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's possibly true here as uh, we go ahead and scroll on down. And it has not been posted on the conference website yet. Okay. So uh, we'll find out eventually uh, what happened in that game as Sol Ross hosts Harden Simmons. So, uh, Coach, any final thoughts here before we wrap it up? No, we can hash it out on, on SU Football Weekly. But I told the guys after the game, I'm proud of how hard they're playing. They're, they're competitive. It's a competitive group, and that's something that they can be proud of. We all want to win. No doubt, but we don't give up, and that's a great life skill. So, I'm, I mean, if you call it a moral victory, fine, but they're good dudes. They play hard, and they're going to play hard again next week. All right, appreciate your time, Coach. Thank you for making the hike up here. The elevator broke in, uh, yeah, yeah. here, uh, thanks uh, casually to the snow apocalypse. But uh, thank you for taking the time, and, uh, yeah, we'll talk with you Wednesday at 6 on SU Football Weekly. Excellent. I'm going to duck out. All right, that is Joe Austin and his postgame thoughts. I've been Carl Schoening. Once again, your final score, Bellhaven defeats Southwestern 21-7 to here at Burkle Bach Field, the final home game of the regular season, final regular season game, actually. So keep it tuned in. Find out on SU Football Weekly Wednesday at 6 what will be happening next with the Southwestern Pirates. Have a good rest of your day, everybody.